Yes, friends. So we will move on to the very interesting, loving, fantastic chapter called portfolio management. See, in the previous chapter, security valuation, you have understood about the valuation of one stock, bond, and all. Now, once you do that individual valuations, let us consider including it in the portfolio. And you have seen this derivative chapter also. Okay, like how the valuation. So with that security valuation chapter is finished. So okay, derivative has got a very limited application. I don't. I can say there is no application only. Maybe one or two questions you may come across. Okay, so this is, we will learn more about the portfolio management in this particular chapter. So what, how what what you are going to get here? As as I said, ninety percent of the questions or eighty percent of the questions will be revolving around these four concepts. You have to get, you should be thorough. Like first box, if you are telling you, have you created a portfolio management box now? Security evaluation is done. Okay, now you have to create a box called portfolio management. In that portfolio management, four small boxes. Again, there is one more, not four. Again, basics you forget now. No, basics is just theory, just introduction. It is actually three, modern portfolio theory, single index model of sharp and portfolio evaluation in these two things are crux evaluation portfolio evaluation certain portion have been discussed in the mutual fund chapter okay these are full of practical theory okay from the examination point of view what i have seen in the new syllabus they are not asked any theory only theory is there so much theory is there let us see RTP, MTP questions, which type of theories have come in study metal, which type of theories they give. That we will see later. But at this point, of, it is more Q&A. And in one of the examination, around 35 to 40 mark question, they asked only from security evaluation and portfolio management chapter. That year, the students who have studied these two chapters thoroughly, they, you should have seen their face, smiling, happy, and exceptional marks. People who have gambled, and left these two chapters or one of the chapter, it was very tough for them because they could not touch that. It was a repeat question only, but you need to understand this chapter, you have to practice this chapter. It's a very easy, did you have a statistics, learn median, mean, standard, filled with this only. It's a very fun, at least I say, okay, security evaluation you liked and let this chapter happen and you say that, yo, you like this chapter more than security evaluation is like this okay so first we will talk about this one minute huh? let me one one blank pdf pause okay now first we will learn about the basics and when you when i'm talking about basics no examination question just a basic part Examination question will start from modern portfolio theory. Now, what is a portfolio management? Portfolio means, see, anybody's investments are not centered upon one thing. Somebody will have, say, your parents only. Go and check now what is their portfolio. Something they have taken insurance policies, bonds they have invested. Somebody is invested in the art, real estate, shares, gold. These are all the different different places your parents might have made the investments correct now a portfolio is a collection of investment tools these are all investment tools like securities in securities also there is a portfolio of securities it's not one security you must have invested in mrpl reliance industries some derivative products you must have invested now stocks mutual funds bonds see these are in when i'm talking about Security, security will be further into stocks, bonds, mutual funds, all those things it will go. Somebody, they will keep certain cash with them. Follow, no? So like this, some person must have done a group of investments. So you as a portfolio manager, and if you want to become a, pursue a career here, that means giving service to the other people, what is that? Handling their money. See, me, despite being CA, I don't handle my money well because it is not happening to me. I don't know why. But 
Ah, there are some professional people who will handle my investments. They will give me advices because they are in and out. They are day in day out. They are into investments only. The job morning they get up, read four to five newspapers, look for information, do research. They figure out which share is better, how the economy is moving, whether the interest rate how it impact, whether the real estate sector will be good. See one of the like this one investor ad advisor was there. He advised me one information which again I never implemented. Some people advised me certain things. One advice was something like this. Somebody said, look every year you create one FD of say one lakh rupees. Say whatever maturity, five years. Second year, create one more FD for five years. Third year, one more FD for five years. Done. Do this for next five years. Enough. I didn't implement. Then what was the idea? The fifth year FD when it gets matured, no? Don't touch it. Renew it for another five years. Now sixth year mature FD. See, your investment is only for first five years. Then onwards, no, that FD will get renewed, renewed, renewed. And beautiful compounding interest you are going to get. I didn't do it. Followed, no? Another investor told me, look, if you want to invest in real estate, don't invest right now in a place like in the market. You look for a place which is remote. Now, no, you look 30 years from now, what is going to happen? That also I didn't invest. See, already my 17 years are gone. A beautiful period where I could have done fantastic investment, that is gone. But my suggestion, you all, online students, for you also, everyone, don't miss it. No? Why are you learning this? Marks too you will get, like me. Will you use these subjects? Will you use these concepts? See, these concepts, what we are discussing, it is not for the exam, Baba. You are going to become a professional. You may be a practicing CA or you may get into a job into a treasury department of a company. Should you not apply these concepts? And these are all practical concepts and the concepts what we have discussed, what we are going to discuss. To develop these concepts, somebody have got Nobel Award. Simply they didn't get. And the professional fund managers are using these concepts. See, we are fortunate enough. We are learning this. But I was unfortunate enough not to apply it. Followed, no? So, whatever, security violation also, don't think that it is a theoretical thing, it is a practical thing. You have to do it, because security violation is a very base for portfolio management. Unless you evaluate a security, what is its intrinsic value? How can you decide, should you have it in your portfolio or not? That is why I start with the security valuation. I don't start with portfolio management. Your derivative is okay. You can after security valuation, ideally, yeah, you can start with the derivative, ideally. Then you can talk about portfolio because your portfolio will include your derivatives also, certain contracts. But there is no much application, so somebody can do derivative later. But the forex, before forex, derivative has to happen. You can't straight away jump into forex. There is the interconnections. So investment in securities require a good amount of scientific and analytical skills. Okay, one more, some, somebody advised me, one more, I, uh, don't invest in, in endowment funds, life insurance. This is the first insurance which anybody want to sell to you. Don't invest in this. Instead, whatever premium you would have paid for that endowment, no, you invest in one mutual fund and plus take one term policy. Never invest in the endowment funds. Endowment fund returns are nothing. They will offer you 3%, 4%. You want this benefit? Take one term policy, no. Plus mutual funds. Invest this premium in mutual funds. Or this feature, who can give you? A ULIP can give you. You go for unit liquidity insurance plan. My own example. 22,000 rupees premium I was paying for one life insurance. For first five years I paid. I stopped it. I don't know why. On my bad luck only. And after five years, when I took this, it's an insurance, okay? Ten times they offer me. You leap. It's an you leap. Unit linked insurance plan. When after five years, I was, see what I had paid? I have paid 1,10,000 rupees. Total premium for five years. 1,10,000 or 1,20,000, whatever. After five years, when I said, because my lock-in period was five years, when I withdrew, 
its value was 235000 rupees within 5 years almost doubled along with one insurance plan fantastic that's why nobody will sell you this ulip huh? minimum amount of investment itself is 50000 today you have to ask give me this ulip give me term tell me term okay like this these are all like you also may get lot of investment advices if you research you can fantastic advices you need to have that interest so that you can increase your money now investment in securities re require a good amount of scientific and analytical skills and more than skills it requires an interest curiosity as per the famous principle that you should not put your all the eggs in the same basket because investor never invest his entire investable in one security it is it is a foolishness i invested i i was purchasing shares like 1000 1000 shares tata motors 1000 shares alent that foolishness again despite learning this language not adopted cost heavily followed no so this is a golden principle don't keep your money in one place distribute it an investor who is an expert in portfolio analysis may generate profits on a sustainable basis that's what you can be if you adopt these principles now what are the activities involved in the portfolio management first security selection on what basis security evaluation construction of the feasible portfolio then you have to decide what you need to have in your portfolio and the third you need to decide the weights how much weight i should have gold in my uh, this thing and uh, one person told me invest in gold when 2008 nothing gold price was nothing at that time i didn't listen to him nothing i never invested in the gold later part i invested when the market went up so this type of advices you get then you have to evaluate okay what do you need to have now what are the phases of security portfolio management it starts with the security analysis called the fundamental analysis and technical analysis technical analysis there is another chapter called the security analysis there we will discuss about this this security analysis is another chapter small chapter theoretical chapter some seven four or five questions are there market is imperfect leading to incorrect pricing contrary to the billing for random walk theory now what is this random walk theory what is the market pricing we will discuss in that chap particular chapter next portfolio analysis this involves combining of the securities to form the portfolio such portfolio has its own specific risk and return characteristics which are not aggregates of the characteristics of the individual security see understand students one rule of life rule of the nature see what behaves in a smaller way need not behave when it is a larger way one person may talk very confidently in front of 10 people but in front of 10000 people It, it may behave totally in a different way you may confidently prepare tea for 10 people but when the time comes to prepare tea for 1000 people you may not be capable enough because the way it behaves is totally different that's why when you are investing in small securities it may be different but when it comes to a group of securities the way they interact itself is different different equation only a security is giving you good return but the moment it goes to the portfolio no portfolio it will behave in different way it's like we only we individually we behave in one particular way the moment we are put into our own group we behave start behaving in different way so we have to understand and that is called portfolio analysis the portfolio selection the goal of the rational investor is to identify the efficient portfolios out of the whole set of feasible portfolios so there are so many investments are there which one i should choose efficient one and then optimum portfolio understand both are different efficient means i should choose one which gives me best return for the lowest risk but can i put every money into one investment no there are four five securities which give me best return so i have to choose the optimum means weight is it 10% this 20% this 60% into balance or 40 60 50 50 1090 that's called optimum but the underlying principle efficient portfolio should have highest return for the lowest risk or lowest risk for the highest return then only i should go for that 
and that is called the efficient portfolio followed no and once you choose that portfolio then you should choose the weight now after you have selected the portfolio then from time to time you have to monitor it baba otherwise it will go for a toss you don't know what is happening outside there Warren Buffett has told once you invest company you forget about it but Warren Buffett tracks it huh? and if you really forget about it no one day you have to really forget it only this is, this is what is going to happen so constantly monitor it revision is going to lead into the addition deletion sometimes you see something is worthless you, no emotions here okay in portfolio management in finance no emotions you go with emotion you have lost this game don't attach your emotion to something now last is the portfolio evaluation check the performance of the portfolio which is better so there are different different ratios called sharp ratio trainer ratio Jensen's alpha and portfolio revision strategies are there thus the construction of a portfolio is a combination of assets given n securities you can comprise different different uh, categories of portfolio this portfolio may comprise only two security three securities or up to n securities and there is a combination also what should be the proportion a portfolio may contain the same securities or with the different different weights that is also another portfolio so you have got two port securities with 50 50 that is one portfolio no same security 60 40 another portfolio now which one you will choose among two will you choose one portfolio both mrpl infosys will you choose 50 50 ratio or 60 40 ratio gut feeling no baba that's called non-statistical don't go with your emotions there emotions may be wrong you have to go with the analyticals gather the data analyze it which makes sense to you nothing is certain here now portfolio theories there are traditional approach and a modern approach and this is what we are going to learn under the modern portfolio theory what is the traditional approach under traditional investor study includes insight into age health responsibility risk appetite like you go to someone your senior like somebody is there or your relative is there you ask them sir i want to invest where should i invest then they will ask you certain questions what is your age now what is your how many kids do you have what do you want how much risk you are what is your income it's a traditional approach no no analytics there somebody is feeling only calculated things and say okay then you invest in that what is the basis your judgment portfolio objectives are decided by maximizing the wealth and what was the objective of somebody's when somebody gave you an advice what was the only objective there maximum profit followed no that was the objective not concerned with the risk and all balancing and all was not there now investment strategy consists of balancing the fixed security with the equity high dividend with the high growth balancing income tax also i need to consider your income tax purpose also balancing transaction cost against the capital gain switching so all these were the traditional analysis retaining some liquidity some cash with you now adequate equity diversification was sought and selection of the individual investment by calculating the intrinsic value comparing with the market price asking expert advisors these newspapers tipsters so these were all the traditional approaches and which you are not supposed to do anymore why if you not have learned this chapter you would have definitely gone to the traditional approach since you are going to learn this chapter you have to learn how to do modern day analysis of the portfolio and this modern approach was developed by one guy called Harry Markowitz in 1950s and that is famously called modern portfolio theory. It gives one logical or a mathematical framework which investors can optimize their risk and return. And the central theme of the modern portfolio theory is the diversification. He simply said, see people knew from the time immemorial, immemorial thousands of years back only people knew that I can't should not keep my all eggs into one basket. I have to diversify and he is also telling diversify problem what is the difference previously where to keep the egg okay you you have to keep it something in a safe place something for the futuristic purpose so that was going through that gut feeling diversification was a gut feeling but he mathematically explained it how to do it he established came with the concept of a correlation okay all those things according to him investors are mainly concerned with the two properties risk and return this 
is the essence of the theory risk of an individual asset hardly matters to any investors what really matters is the contribution it makes to the overall risk that means he said look individual assets risk you don't bother you look when you group it no mix it into a portfolio you look at what is the risk it is contributing to the portfolio that is what you need to focus see something like what i can tell you what this theory of portfolio or what we are going to do it see a uh, prediction everybody wants to do a prediction now i am trying to predict what return i am going to get by investing right now in the shares it is like do you want to predict that um, how much marks you are going to get in the exam do you want me to predict i do in afm how much marks you are going to get would you like me to predict prediction everybody likes no somebody says i know palmistry instantly somebody will put your hand and say okay please tell me what is going to happen everybody is interested in the predictions now that prediction can go two ways one is non statistical gut feeling another is statistical now non statistical is like i can simply say by looking at your face and all something like i could say oh you look like a good intelligent student you will score so much that may not give you con some of okay for some of you it may give you confidence but there is an alternative way called a statistical what should i do what should i do to predict how much mark you may score you have to give one test to you mock test so when you give me one mock test at least i will start developing one expectation from you based on that results i can say somewhere i can predict okay how much mark you may score now more and more mock test you give then what i do i take an average of the mock test and that becomes my expectation see niro chopra nobody was expecting anything from him olympics he go on a gold followed no then that set one base next asian also he won a gold now one average expectation started i start to expect what i am expecting now gold you you go next you go anywhere you play anywhere you get less than gold no i don't want i want gold only why because your past records on an average shows that you are getting gold so based on your mock test okay on an average if i derive one mean value this is mathematical way this is what he did markowitz did because your share prices are equal to your exam marks no unpredictable but can we guess just like share price ha huh, we can guess there are two we, we can do two type of fundamental analysis also we can do technical analysis also we can do we can conduct more, more of mock test and based on that we can predict it or we can study your iq what type of analysis you do what is your thinking based on that also we can predict mock test not required first part is called fundamental analysis fundamentally who you are second part irrespective of who you are i just see the chart of your mock test results and then i'll try to predict what mark you may get followed no so this is the crux of this chapter now what is risk risk analysis is what is risk tell me in portfolio or in securities what is risk market price will fall if market price fall is what is what is your problem what you are not going to get expected returns you are not going to get followed no so you are expecting gold the risk is you may not get that gold what you expect you may not get that is the risk that's why future is uncertain and uncertainty is associated with the returns introduce the element of a risk there are two types of return called expected return and the realized return expectation is what you are expecting realized is what actually happens and when your expectation match with the reality you are happy one there is one book okay psychology of money he gave one beautiful equation for happiness what is happiness expectation minus reality or say for no ulta reality minus expectation fantastic that is happiness you are not expecting anything whatever you get you feel very happy the moment you fix one expectation 
unless that expectation is met, you will never be happy. Okay. So, whatever it is, this possible variation of the actual return from the expected return is termed as a risk. Understand? The risk is nothing but what you are expecting versus what actually happens. That is a risk. Unhappiness is the risk. Happiness is more than what you expect. You got more than what you expect. Okay, so what you should do in exams? See, after writing exams, don't expect. Eh? Because see, we think, students, I'll tell you one thing, my opinion. We think that we are getting marks. We are not getting marks. God is giving marks. That's what they say no? in Bhagavad Gita also. They said, you do your work. But the return what comes, no, we try to establish one cause and effect to that. But we, in reality, it is difficult. We try to do that. But there are a lot of factors, understand? It's not that what you have written and what you are going to get. There are a lot of factors involved. Grace marks of the institute, cutoff mark of the institute, the evaluator's mindset, which paper comes on when uh, before you, after you, what was his mind? So many factors are there. Is the, all those factors are within your control? No, because marks depends on all those factors also, no? along with that. That's why how much you can expect, no? 50% you can expect because 50% is what you have contributed. But the rest of 50% no, is what God gives to you. So put your 100% so that irrespective odds are there. Chalo, everything is odd. Evaluator's mindset is not good. Institute has cut it. Okay, cut the marks in every single paper. Every single paper was tough. So many things are there. But since you have given your 100%, how much marks you are going to score? 50. Sufficient no, for us to pass. Aggregate. Ah, so give your 100%. That's it. Don't expect. And investors' returns are fairly stable. Is considered to be the low-risk investment, like treasury bill bonds. Why? Because you can, you can expect with the treasury bond. What they give is what you expect. They can't say that I will not give you interest. Fluctuate significantly like shares. No, no expectation. You can't expect only. <laughs> you may be, like, what you expect may not get. So what causes the risk? This variation in the return causes, is caused by the number of factors. Understand? The marks what you're going to get is caused by number of factors. And these are all different, different types of risks involved. So element of risk. Okay, coming to the thing. What type of risks are there? There are two types of risk called systematic risk and unsystematic risk. Systematic risk in the share, because share price is, the share price change means your returns is going to change. That return will not match your expectation because of two factors, two type of reasons. One is systematic risk, another is unsystematic risk. Systematic risk is related to the market, like interest rate, market risk, purchasing power parity, Ukraine, go Russia war, Nothing doing because if those things happen, no share market will go for a toss. Irrespective of best of best people also will go for a toss. Imagine Indian economy went for a toss. And this year ICA decided we will not pass single CA only. Why? Because if some CA comes out, that person doesn't have a job. Then one spread news will spread, no? A CA is not getting job. No, you should say for a hypothetical case. You should want to say that. No, this year let the result be very strict. Only 1000 CA only I will bring out. Why? Because market is capable to absorb only 1000 CA. And I don't want to see any unemployed CAs. So that my reputation is gone. From 75 years you are building, no, CA means CA. That should, that should happen. That is systematic risk. Not within your control. Nothing doing there. Followed, no? That, is, that risk is always there. In whatever, in shares also there, in our... See, journey is also there. Unsystematic risk is something like your business risk, financial risk. These are all related to us, our preparations, our IQ. Follow, no? Now, total risk is nothing but a combination of systematic and unsystematic risk. So, if you get certain marks which deviates from your expectation, there can be two reasons. One is systematic risk, nothing doing. Institute for everybody, cut 10 marks. Systematic risk. Alternatively, they have given 10 marks in another subject. Less marks. Both are there. That is, is it within your control? No. So, when such things happen, your expectation and the reality will deviate. What you are expected, you may not get. That is one of the reasons. 
the second reason what is this unsystematic that you can figure out that's because of me only i only made a mistake that blunder calculation mistake happened this i did not read the question only then whom you are going to tell that for this followed no so evaluator didn't talk evaluate only one one mark one question evaluator didn't evaluate only that systematic risk what you can do nothing why our institute doesn't have a system of re-evaluation the rolling is there what to do like see israel people and palestinian people are crying is it their fault no but what to do it is a systematic so somebody's paper evaluation didn't happen it is a part of the system that risk is always there in this course so we have to understand so now unsystematic risk is known as called idiosyncratic risk remember this word huh? suddenly i have not seen any question but our institute one systematic risk is there no suddenly one idiosyncratic risk calculate idiosyncratic risk what is this are baba unsystematic risk how to calculate we'll see can we eliminate the risk see if risk is nothing but reality minus expectation what you expect minus what you use that is the risk no can you eliminate can you make this risk zero <laughs> that uh, one is reduced the expectation no, no no why we should not why we should not do that yeah i understand in, uh, in uh, when it comes to life we should not have expectation but it's very it's like a saintly type of thing that you don't have expectation but giving 100 percent of you you should have a motivation no to give 100 percent. and what is that motivation your expectation itself is the motivation i want to score this much you put your efforts ah, what you are telling is a fantastic i don't have any expectation only but i'm enjoying this subject i'm putting 100 percent i wish every single student would have been that it is a saintly thing it is a it is the next level this is the true purpose of life you are happy what you are doing you are happy you are enjoying your preparations it is adding value to you every moment that's what should be okay other than that you set your expectation but you will not be able to reach that expectation because of the risk can you eliminate that risk one risk see, among two risks which risk you can eliminate unsystematic you can address how prepare systematic risk is nothing doing things it's the grace of god people who are there in the party risk when the hamas attack nothing doing why is they were there no answer for that they could have been somewhere else like i could have been somewhere else i could have been a doctor why i am into this course no answer destiny you have to believe that god must be planned something for me okay yes can we eliminate yes but partially by combining many securities in the portfolio the unsystematic risk can be avoided however the systematic risk cannot be eliminated effects of the diversification are exhausted fairly rapidly the more and more you diversify no effect is exhausted that is the most of the reduction in the portfolio occurs the moment the size reaches 30, 25 to 30 that is more and more time you do revision unsystematic risk will go follow no 20 to 30 3 to 4 times unsystematic risk will go if you do that revision okay adding security beyond this size brings about only a marginal reduction. fifth time revision sixth time revision it brings only a marginal addition to you so it goes like this see number of securities held in the portfolio the moment you increase this the total risk will reduce but which portion unsystematic risk systematic risk is like always constant it can never be touched by you when you are investing in the shares like government of india inflation all those things nothing you can influence you can influence only the individual securities written by having it or not you have got only a choice whether to have that security or not to have that security that's it so this is the difference what is the difference between systematic and unsystematic risk it is the market risk it is the company risk cannot be eliminated yes it can be eliminated with the diversification now systematic risk is measured with one unit called beta we have come across but we didn't discuss much we'll focus more now 
but here it is difficult to measure unsystematic risk it's called error e square this is the indicator we will solve the problem it is an error square a random error you can call it it inflation okay gdp war etc are the causes of the systematic risk liquidity management issues fire in the factory these are all the unsystematic risk like okay one more thing with this we will finish like sir so you uh, get unwell you fell sick it is an unsystematic risk can it be avoided ah, by having a good food good practices we can avoid it but systematic risk again we cannot avoid it while on the way strike happens okay so now we will come to the modern portfolio theory from now onwards the, that is the basic part huh? so here we are going to discuss see any questions within this five these are sub boxes modern portfolio sharp index evaluation these are the three major things in this modern portfolio theory you have got expected return and risk of individual stock how to expect return from the stock single stock then you include those and how my portfolio risk and return is going to come what is this coefficient of correlation because this coefficient of correlation concept is required to decide the risk of the portfolio without that we cannot decide the risk of the portfolio how one is related to another followed no see uh, like okay maybe i'll tell you with the example so that you understand how it is practically applicable then you have to select the efficient portfolio and there is one theory called the capital market line for fund allocation how to allocate my funds how to deliver this see this is the efficient portfolio is a selection of the portfolio efficient only then we decide you know after you select you have to go for an optimal weight you say four or five but in which weight it is that is this the first one expected return and risk of a single stock an intelligent investor would at and attempt to anticipate the kind of risk that is likely to face risk means difference between expectation and reality and would also attempt to estimate and quantify that risk also associated with the different in, uh, investments so you should give mock test because you are an intelligent student so that you can anticipate where the risk can come from mock test is not meant for oh what i am going to get in the exam i don't know people are afraid to give mock test mock test are not the true purpose of mock test is not that mock test is to define my risk risk anticipate my expectations rather than my gut feeling otherwise if you don't give no you are going with a non statistical risk assessment it is going to help you only now a risk is attached with the return its risk cannot be measured without reference to a return that means return is always important for me to measure the risk the return in turn depends upon the cash inflows to be received from the investment because cash is the nothing but the market price no we discussed the valuation happens based on the cash flow so how to discuss calculate the returns and risk see there can be two type of ways to anticipate what i expect okay first thing is on the basis of the past data or on the basis of probability there are only two scenarios now what is on the basis of past data i will take all past 5 year share price and first step i will calculate the actual return how much it gave me what is my definition of actual return change in the price capital gain plus dividend whatever they had it has given to me divided by opening price will this give me the percentage of return it offered to me like at the beginning of the year what was its price at the end of the year what is its price during the year how much dividend it give yes i got the first year return second year i will do the same thing third year also i will do the same thing fourth year also i do the same so these percentages i will denote it by x then for five years so i have got five x values first year return second year return third year return fourth year return and then i will calculate average return by sum of x by n first year pc statistical thing is an average way and how do i calculate the risk risk is nothing but the standard deviation we are going to use a standard deviation risk is square root of sum of x minus x bar that means how much see your average is 50 marks 
Now, what is your standard deviation? Because I have to, will you exactly get 50? No, definitely, because what I calculated is more than average. In reality, generally, when I calculated average, okay, how much was your deviations from individual values? Because that gives me a better understanding of you. Are you a volatile person or are you like a uh, player like a Dravid, Rahul Dravid? Rahul Dravid's, your standard deviation is very low. That's why he is a reliable, consistent player. Follow no? Sanat Jay Surya's, say for example, I'm just telling example. Or say for example, Virat Kohli's. Standard deviation is very high. That means he may get out for zero also. He may score 150 also. So, risk, standard deviation represents the risk. How much deviation? So, I am going to use a calculation x, individual value minus the mean, and I am going to square that divided by the number of observations. Followed, no? So, what do you wish? Standard deviation should be low or high? Then, expectation of return also? Low. Because risk and return go hand in hand, no? So, standard deviation is very high. Now, then from that person, you start expecting rank. Deviation, because anything can be possible, no? That person, if he is not well motivated, he may fail also. If he is polished very well or she is polished very well, she may secure rank also. So, you can identify the stocks first using the past trend. Like that shares, Infosys, volatile. It can give you a zero return also, it can give you exceptional return also. Understood the first one? This is based on the past data. Or I will go with the probability. What may happen next year? In that case, I have got only one, three values. Either I will get 40%, it is 100 rupees. 20%, it is 120 rupees. 10%, it is 150 rupees. So what is the expected value? I multiply the probability and say, on an average, I may get 1, not 5. In this case, average is p into x, standard deviation into square root of x into x minus whole square. Several other measures also available, okay, range, semi-variance, mean absolute deviation, etc. But the market uses standard deviation, which is the most popular one. People understand using standard deviations better. Okay, so with this, we will see solve the problems. Yes. Now we will see the expected return of the portfolio. What is the expected return? Here the portfolio contains the different different stocks with the expected return for each of the stocks. Like individually, you know, they have given you X bar for multiple stocks. Again, you need not calculate. Already they would have given you. We need to find out when I join them together, how much my portfolio as a whole is giving me. That's called a portfolio return. Like MRPL will give you 12%. Infosys will give you 18%. Now, when you buy MRPL also, Infosys also. Now, question comes only, what is my return? Tell me. You can, can you tell me? MRPL. So, I will take two stock. Infosys, TCS. Infosys gives me 10%. Inf uh, TCS gives me 20%. What is my, when I buy both the shares, what is my expected return? What is your assumption? Huh? Ah, that is your assumption. That's why always uh, before making such assumption, if nothing is given in the question, your assumption is 50% here, 50% here. But always and always, the moment you use the word called portfolio, look for weight. Without weight, it is impossible to tell what is the portfolio. Followed, no? So always you have to look for the weights. Expected return is nothing but the weighted average return of the individual securities. So we need the weights and they will give the weights in different different ways. Be careful. Expected return can be calculated using total return divided by the total portfolio value or expected return of the single stock into weight of single stock plus expected return of the single second stock by the weight of the second stock. Yes, risk also we will discuss that so because it is a small thing, uh, portfolio return is a small thing. Risk is the major crux now of his central theme. Now, what is portfolio risk? Yes, I want you to understand properly here because it's not so simple. Portfolio risk is not your uh, weighted average risk of individual stock. Okay, maybe I will ask you one more question. 
first one you said very clearly you said sir my average return is 15 percent now my standard deviation of infosys is 10 percent standard deviation of tcs is 20 percent what is my standard deviation if i take both 50 50 if i both of them i will take 50 50 invest what is my portfolio return will you say 15 portfolio standard deviation no there is another method to calculate it why because when i talk about the risk you know i need to understand the relationship between these two how they behave it is not the weighted average return is the weighted average risk is not the weighted average followed no so when it comes to the risk we need to find out something called a correlation are both our friends are both our enemies now in one room what we need to have friends or enemies huh? no you tell me what is your objective now there are say two people are or three people are there out of that two people are friends and two okay uh, Okay, two sets of people are there. Okay, this is called A and B. This is an A and C, uh, B, C and D. These two are friends. These two are enemies. Now, in one room, which type of people will you put A, B together or C, D together? If you don't want any noise. What is risk? Simple, no, Baba. No, they are, don't have any relationship only. This is one portfolio. This is one portfolio. Portfolio. That means, follow. Now this is a portfolio. Is a weight. Now which two people you make to sit in the C and D? Why you don't want risk? Don't want noise. So give something which is opposite. Then risk will come down. If noise is the risk, risk will come down. Follow. No. So that's why if you want to figure out the risk, no. Always you have to find out the correlation. If the return, say you are not. Noise is the risk or noise is not the risk. Suppose, for example, you want any people to shout. Okay, how big they must shout, they can shout it. Whom you'll have? You say there anybody. Okay, shouting, no, not a problem, weighted average. But risk when it comes, it is not a weighted average. You have to look into the relationship. Okay, so this is what we are going to talk about now. The variance of a portfolio can be written as a sum of two terms aggregate weighted variance of the constituent securities and weighted covariance among different pairs of securities so i need to understand the covariance or correlationship covariance is a measure of how two securities move together will they move in same direction or will they move in separate direction like suppose simple you have to invest can you invest in infosys and tcs But problem, Baba, you understand, no, both are IT stocks. If IT goes for a toss, your entire investment went for a toss, no. So very, so one of the company you should choose Infosys, one of the IT. Now among I, Infosys and TCS, whom you are going to choose? That's called security selection. To make a portfolio from one sector, among these two, you will choose the one who gives you highest return for the lowest risk okay you finalized tcs who is the other person who should be there in your portfolio if you give the correlation if infosys uh, tcs price movement and that person's price movement go in the same direction then no nothing doing you will is like putting both decks into same now you need to figure out one security who moves in opposite direction is there any sector when the IT sector falls, that sector emerges. This is what you should know by reading newspaper, economics. Look for the patterns. Is there any sector? When the IT is going, other sectors will increase. Say for example, manpower sector, manpower supply. Why? Because IT is something, they are replacing manpower, so you have got a manpower. In the manpower industry is sector, how many companies are there? Say, for example, company is there, say, for example, Amazon services, who are supplying humans, manpower. 
again there also you will choose one and now you will have a portfolio of TCS and Amazon services. If the TCS is going to fall, Amazon is going to raise. So that overall your risk of the portfolio will remain constant only, it will get balanced. Now how to, start, how to know what is the relationship between two securities? For this you will prepare something, calculate something called a covariance. And from covariance you will arrive at a correlationship. And use that and figure out what is the risk of the portfolio as a whole. It is like investing in AC, LG. Okay, you have invested in LG. You go to the opposite. Okay, LG sales in AC will increase when? Summer. Now, is there any company whose sale falls during summer and raises during winter? Huh? Uh, heaters. So, you will go into a, say for example, a heater company and pick one LG stock and pick one heater stock and keep it. Now, in the heater segment, there are so many companies. Individual companies stock you figure out and pick the one who is giving you highest return for the lowest risk. This way it works. This is portfolio management. So, now you should imagine how much work is involved once upon a time. Today, click of a button, all these analysis are happening in a computer. Followed, no? These are all concepts came in 1960s when manual working was there. So, what is this weighted average of the variance? So, they said if you want to find out the variance of the portfolio or standard deviation, it is the aggregate of weighted variances. That means your weighted variance of A square into weight of A square. Variance of weight square into weight of B square plus weighted covariance that is 2 times weight of A into weight of B, standard deviation of A into standard deviation of B into correlation of A and B. Different. So, you have to see what they have given in the question. Now, first you should know what is the difference, that is the first important. No? Otherwise, how do you understand what is that? Or if they do not give me correlation, ulta they give me covariance, I should use the equation standard deviation of the portfolio is equal to vary, whatever, same uh, variance into weight of A, variance square, uh, variance of B into weight of B square, you have 2 times weight of A into weight of B into covariance of AB. Now, if it, there are assets with the 3 assets, then I have to do it 3 times A and weight of A, B into weight of B, C into weight of C. 2 times way into A, covariance between AB, AC, AB. Yeah, more problems we solve, we understand it better. Now, what is the portfolio of stock and risk free asset? Suppose if you have a risk free, I will come to that. I will we'll solve the problem, I will explain you. So, then and there itself. So, you systematically understand every single component of this. Now, what is the standard deviation of the portfolio and risk free asset? The standard deviation of the risk free asset is always 0. You have invested in a debenture. What do you expect from a debenture? 10 percent coupon. Will they give you? Yes, you are always happy. Why? Because you are always expectation match with the reality. So, always remember the standard deviation of risk free asset like bonds, debentures is always 0. What is the correlation between stock and risk free asset? Correlation between stock and risk free asset? Zero. See, if the stock market falls, did the price of bond also will fall? No. Bond, they have to give you intrinsic value, no. Stock market increased, did the bond price also increase? No, no. Stock, see, bond is something which is going to give you fixed money. It has got no correlation with the stock market. Stock market, let it go for a hell, let it go to the top. You are going to what you are going to get as per the contract. Followed, no? That's why if they, if you have got a portfolio where you have got a stock and you have got one bond, then what is the return of the portfolio? It is expected return of the stock and the weight of stock plus expected return of the bond and weight of bond. What is the risk of the portfolio? Since your RF risk is zero, so in this equation, if I put See, 
you have put zero here. Risk of bond is zero. So every weight of bond when you multiply everything becomes zero here. You see this equation, no? Standard deviation of A square into weight of A square. Yes, we have. But standard deviation of risk free is zero. So you make it zero. Everything becomes zero, gone. Two times weight of A, standard deviation of A into weight of A into standard deviation of B, which is zero. The when moment you get this standard deviation of risk free is zero, everything becomes zero. Then what remains is this. So when you have got a bond and a stock, the portfolio's standard deviation is nothing but standard deviation of the individual stock and its weight. That's it. The return and risk of the portfolio depends upon two set factors. Return and risk of individual securities and their covariance, which is not within your control. Correct, no? If I am talking about return and risk of the portfolio, the return depends upon the return of the individual stock. Is it within your control? Tell me. Understood, no students? See, if we are talking about return of portfolio, return of portfolio depends upon return of the stock. Is it within your control? No. What is within your control? Proportion is within your control. Should I have 10% or should I have 90% is within your control. But the individual stock's return is not within your control. Is the covariance between your, within your control? Between LG stock and heater stock covariation, Infosys stock and MRPL stock covariation within your control? No. But having the proportion is within your control. So in the portfolio management, what you are trying to do is you will try to figure out the stock which is giving you fantastic return for the minimum risk. Then you will calculate the covariance between those, or relationship between those, and try to have only those stocks which are negatively correlated. Because you become a fool by having positively correlated stock in your portfolio. Why? Because if the market goes for a toss or a sector or industry goes, it's like putting all eggs into one. No. See, this was not their students. It was going with a gut feeling. This is what this Markovich told. This way, what you can do, you can maximize your return of the portfolio and minimize the return of risk of the portfolio. Why? Because individually, can you address the risk? Standard deviation of Infosys, can you touch? No. But when you can, by changing the proportion, you can bring the risk of the portfolio less than Infosys stocks portfolio, stocks individual risk. Followed, no? Yes. Now you asked me what is correlation? Covariance means how it moves. If Infosys gives you 10% plus, whether TCS will give you plus 10%, you say, sir, covariance is positive covariance. Both are moving same or what may be 20. But if we, when Infosys gives plus 10%, if TCS gives minus 5%, you say it's a negative co covariance. Variance is negative. Co means co movement is negative. So now let us talk about the correlation. Correlation is the strength of relationship. It's called a coefficient of correlation. What is coefficient? Coefficient means a ratio. Followed, no? Something you divide by something else, you get one ratio, no? That's called a coefficient. Beta is also called a coefficient. It's called a coefficient of beta. This is called a coefficient of variation. Don't get confused. Everywhere you use the word called a coefficient. In statistics, coefficient is one, one standard number, a representation, a relationship representation. Followed, no? What we are interested in the second word called a correlation. We never call it co coefficient of variation. Also, sorry, there is one more thing called coefficient of variation. We don't call it coefficient of covariance. No, those terminologies are never used in portfolio management. Coefficient of variation is used. Now, correlation will always lies between minus 1 to plus 1. It cannot become minus 2. There is one bound, there is one range. So, there can be three forms of correlation. One, perfect positive. Perfect positive means... Janma Janma, the friends, if one person is happy, another person is also happy. And one person is sad, another person is equally sad. Both are equal. 
परफेक्ट नेगेटिव वन पर्सन हैप्पी इज एनिमी इज वेरी सैड करेक्ट नो वन पर्सन इज सैड इज एनिमी इज वेरी हैप्पी एंड दैट वॉट टू एग्जैक्टली देन देर इज ऑल अदर देन परफेक्ट नेगेटिव परफेक्ट पॉजिटिव दैट मीन्स हाँ फ्रेंड्स बट नॉट दैट जन्म जन्म द फ्रेंड्स एनिमीज बट नॉट दैट डेड एनिमीज फॉलो नो नाउ हाउ टू कैलकुलेट द को रिलेशन सो इन ऑर्डर टू कैलकुलेट द को रिलेशन बिटवीन टू सिक्योरिटीज वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट द कोवेरियंस फर्स्ट विदाउट कोवेरियंस यू कैन नेवर एवर कैलकुलेट को रिलेशन कोवेरियंस मीन्स द जॉइंट डिविएशन को वेरियंस मीनिंग ऑन दिस नो वेरियंस जॉइंट वेरिएशन सो इफ दे गिव यू पास्ट डेटा कोवेरियंस फॉर्मुला इज covariance of xy is equal to sum of x minus x bar into y minus y bar divided by n did we not do this x minus x bar but only thing we don't square that we multiply y minus y bar and we say this is covariance and if they give me probability sum of x minus x bar into y minus y bar into probability see why we are we want co we can't use this covariance only for our decision purpose because there are two problems with the covariance it tells us only the nature of relationship when you get a positive number you say it's a positive or negative but it will not tell me the degree it is not there is no range only covariance no there is no range in order to solve the problem we calculate the co correlation and the formula for correlation is covariance divided by the standard deviation of x and the standard deviation of y if my standard deviation of x and y is moves in so much and covariance is so much it's like a what is the correlation between them you divide the covariance by the standard deviations this one see since we we could have used covariance only for our decision making purpose but the problem is covariance is not range bound you will get one number called 12% what is 12 is it a 12 up upper or down it, it is very difficult to understand that's why no we calculate one uh, value called correlation so you understand correlation will always lie between plus 1 and minus 1 if you, if the correlation comes plus 1 you say perfect positive if correlation comes minus 1 you say perfect negative nice no if you want to test the friendship should you find uh, test the covariance or correlation ship correlation ship because with the correlation ship you can figure out how much deep friends they are or how much deep enemies they are covariance will not tell that so if you want to find out the relationship you have to go one step further and you have to use this equation correlation is equal to covariance divided by standard deviation of x into standard deviation of y follow okay so now okay your doubt is in my portfolio there is one risk free asset like bond another is stock what is the correlation it is always denoted by r what is r between stock and rf zero correlation ship is zero we will do it while solving problem i'll show you why correlation ship zero if the stock price changes will your bond price also will change no what is the correlation ship between interest rates and the prices of the bond what is that correlation ship what is the correlation ship between interest rates or expectation or ytm and the price of the bond inverse means in correlation language which it is minus it is a negative correlation that means if the ytm increases price of the bonds are going to fall down follow no so that way correlation helps to establish the range so that we can calculate the risk now what are the scenarios of the correlation i told you there are three scenarios perfect positive it will be between 0 and 1 sorry perfect positive is always 1 now if the correlation between two stock is perfectly positive then you cannot eliminate the risk correct no because all the x are in same only i told you this is an infosys both are perfectly positive say for example what is the point in investing into those two stocks that's why what is there is one simple method to calculate the risk of the portfolio 
it is nothing but the weight of the both both the st individual stocks risk so risk of a into weight of a plus risk of b into weight of b gives you the portfolio risk okay now let us talk you understood no students first you understood no if there is a positively correlated values what is going to happen you cannot this cannot be eliminated so it is your risk only you are taking so if the if i ask you portfolio risk then you simply add if the correlation is perfect negative then correlation between stocks are perfectly negative then you can make the portfolio risk zero no risk only because if one stock fails other stocks gives you the return like heater and lg uh, heater and uh, ac so this is called zero risk portfolio it is very difficult to figure out such type of stock if the correlation between stock is perfectly negative then you can calculate the risk of the portfolio by one simple equation risk of individual stock into weight of that stock minus see so if it is perfect positive plus if it is perfect negative minus minus the second portfolio's risk and if it is other than perfect positive negative this is called a minimum risk portfolio because here if it is other than perfect positive see, if it is perfect positive you can never minimize the risk you cannot eliminate the risk if it is perfect negative risk portfolio correlation you can make it zero but if you find other than perfect positive perfect negative then by having one optimum weight you can minimize the risk that is the minimum it cannot be go beyond that so if that is the case how much should be my weight of a so you have got one equation one place or two places they have used this equation it is stock b's variance into standard deviation of a into standard deviation of b into correlation of ab divided by stock a variance square plus b variance minus 2 times a into b into correlation and weight of b is equal to 1 minus a or alternative formula for portfolio risk correlation of ab is covariance of a ab into uh, standard deviation of a into standard deviation of b this is a correlation formula yeah i understand student this is the first time you are see what is my way of teaching is first i'll just tell you what it is then as and when we solve now you get connected again i want you to come back and look into this formula now it may look strange to you too much to you but you will understand it's a simple now covariance is nothing but this no see so can i replace this see covariance formula is nothing but standard deviation of a into standard deviation into correlation how correlation is nothing but covariance by this so bring this here you get the value of covariance so make it covariance so to understand it in a simple manner you can change it with the covariance standard deviation of variance of b square minus covariance of ab divided by variance of a square plus variance of b square minus two times variance of covariance of ab you can express it this way also so that it looks simple this is what this to calculate the weight that is my first step now in all the previous cases i was calculating the standard deviation of the portfolio risk of the portfolio how much my expected return of the portfolio can change for this i use this equation portfolio's risk is equal to standard deviation square of a into weight of a plus standard deviation of square of weight of b plus two times weight of a into weight of b into covariance or this correlation this one equation or this equation you can apply irrespective of its correlation that means anybody ask you what is the risk of the portfolio it is variance of a into weight of a square plus variance of b into weight of b square plus two times weight of a into standard deviation of a weight of b into standard deviation of b into correlation of ab this is for everything but if you see this correlation is perfect positive 
or perfect negative instead of this lengthy formula you can go for this formula also only if it's perfect positive perfect negative otherwise even in perfect positive perfect negative also you can do this but to calculate the risk of the portfolio you need something called co correlationship which is plus minus or minus one and correlationship comes from covariance without calculating covariance you cannot calculate the correlationship and without calculating correlationship or covariance you cannot calculate the risk of the portfolio because risk depends upon the relationship between them return doesn't re return depends upon the weight that's what i told you before if i go back to the equation here the first thing i started to tell you like this the risk depends upon no somewhere Huh, here I told you, portfolio risk is the aggregate of the weight of the variance. That means the first portion. Aggregate of the weight, that is the first portion. And weighted covariance, the second portion. Why? Statistical. Generally accepted. People understood, okay, this should be a measure. So, got an idea? Okay, we'll solve and selection of efficient portfolio. Okay, before this, we will get into the Q and A's. We'll solve some. Q you understood risk and return of single stock. Understood perfectly. Portfolio return. Portfolio risk. When we talk about portfolio risk, correlation. That's it. And last one. Okay, this is what Markowitz said. You understand first. You calculate that, and then. Choose the efficient one only. Why are you are choosing inefficient? Like Infosys is giving 12%, TCS is giving 18%. Both risks are same, 5% standard. Why on earth you want Infosys? Choose this, no. And then choose one more thing which is not positively correlated. Or have the optimum weight. That's what he said. The last part is efficient and optimum portfolio. Now we will come to the last part. Okay, let us understand the theoretical part about this bit theory. Yes. So we will discuss what is the selection of the portfolio. See, what is efficient portfolio? See, there are two things, huh? efficient portfolio and optimum portfolio. Both are different. What is efficient portfolio? For a selection of a portfolio, you need to make a comparison of combination of the portfolio. What is portfolio? Group of securities. Maybe one security itself is one portfolio for you. You can call one security also a portfolio. As a mean variance dominance principle, Markowitz says, what is the mean variance dominance? What is mean variance? Ah, mean is x bar, variance, standard deviation. So, in fact, they are telling risk return. Risk return can be also termed as mean variance. Follow no, somebody may call it mean variance. Don't get confused. Or which word it is? Mean variance means risk return. So they say risk return dominance. That means which is dominating. That has to be decided based on not on something one basis. You have to consider both the factors. Oh, somebody is giving me fifty percent return. Risk may be hundred percent there. So you have to consider which is dominating. Is a portfolio is dominating another portfolio when the mean and a variance, if there is another portfolio with a lower expected return for the same risk. See, that means you, you have got portfolio 1, you have got portfolio 2. Now, I will ask you only one question. Which portfolio is dominating which portfolio? On what basis you say? You say, sir, 1 is dominating 2 when, when the second gives you lower return for the same risk of both. See the language what they have used, don't get confused. That means both are giving you same risk, 5% risk, 5% risk. The second portfolio is giving you 8%, where the first portfolio is giving you 10%. Then you say portfolio 1 dominates portfolio 2. Or the second portfolio for the same return, say both are giving you 10%, 10%. Both are giving you 5%, 5%. Then say, sir, both are parity. Doesn't make a difference. Both are parity. Both doesn't make I can choose anyone. 
No, the second one, if it gives you 4% risk, then you say, second, per second one dominates the first one. Or if this will give you 2%, you say first one will dominate the second one. This is called a mean variance risk return dominance principles. So to select the efficient portfolio, what you need to do? First, select the security having high return with the same level of risk. Or same return having lower level of risk. Or say high return for low level of risk. What if the investor's portfolio is not efficient? Then you are called an inefficient investor. Mad, no? Idiot, you know, if investor's portfolio is not efficient, what if it is investor's, is a full investor, no? Idiot investor. Why? Because when the Infosys was, was giving 12% for 5% risk and TCS is giving 10% for 5% risk. Are, why did he choose his TCS, Baba? So, if the investor's portfolio is not efficient, what he can do then, then he has got an option, opportunity. He can increase the expected return without increasing the risk. That means without taking additional risk. Can he increase the return? Yes. How? By shifting from TCS to Infosys. Did he get extra return? Did you analyze what is your existing portfolio? Is it efficient or not? No, no. Simply you purchased and kept. That's why portfolio evaluation is not one-time activity. I showed you. It is a four step. First, you choose the security, include it, time to time, time evaluate it, and change your portfolio balances. So you get an opportunity to increase the return, or you get an opportunity to decrease the return without expecting any increase in decreasing the return. That means for the same level of return, what you can do by handling your portfolio, if it was inefficient, you can make it more efficient by reducing the risk. Nice, no? Why you are not doing then? It is something like I can increase the mark without putting extra efforts. If your preparations are not efficient, then you have an opportunity to increase the marks without putting extra efforts. Or for the same mark, what you are going to get, you can reduce your effort. Very nice. No? Will you do that? Every, everybody will wish to do it. That's why they said do it. Figure out the techniques. Figure out the inefficiencies. And obtain some combination of increase or what? Do it combination. But primarily, this is what you can do. If you are inefficient, this is what you can do. This is possible how? By switching to a portfolio on an efficient frontier. That means by switching your preparation methodology or timing, you shift your time. The most difficult subject or the most boring subject should be studied when? I can't say morning, evening, night and all. Every person will have one fantastic time, say two hours or three hours. For me, it was evening five o'clock to seven o'clock or say four o'clock to seven o'clock. Fantastic time. Anything I sit with that time, just it enters my mind. And there is some time, odd time. Okay, say for example, 12 to 1 or something like that. Say for example, I'm telling you. So, what we should do, how we can become efficient by shifting. That means, don't read the subject which you love the most, uh, easy concept at 4 to 7. Take the difficult one. This is switching, no? So, you can make it efficient. I like this. What is efficient frontier for you? Okay, now we will come across something called efficient frontier. See, and remember, efficient frontier is a graphical representation. It is called a non-linear. It is not straightforward. It is not like, you remember convex, convexity, it was like this. This is linear. Say, efficient frontier is not linear like this. It is something like this. Okay. What it is? It is this. So, when you plot the return x bar with the standard deviation, risk on the x, x axis and the return on the y axis, and you start plotting, okay, for this risk, this return I got, there is one more stock. For this risk, this return I got, so you plot it here. There is one more stock, for this risk, this return, you plot like this, you start plotting it, followed, no? And then you draw one line, we will do this work, we will do this, there is one, uh, this uh, questions are there. 
and the line when you join all these portfolios, no, it will come like this. It is not linear. Now, all the portion below no, are inefficient. Never ever go for this. Why? Because you always have the, the securities or portfolio which are at the border of this. No, These are all the efficient portfolios. Like for example, I will compare two things. Okay, just see here. You have got security A and security B. Let us compare security A and security B. What's, how much security A is having? 5% risk. How much security B is also having? 5% risk. How much A is offering you? 10%. How much B is offering? 12%. That means A is inefficient. That means anybody who gives you 12% return, they should be, risk should be less than that. Is there anyone here? No. That means if anybody comes, then tomorrow B will be out. Somebody else is going to come and that risk is going to come here. Point will come here. So this will give you a very clear picture. Who should I should include? Who should I should not include? Above this, you find any single portfolio, you know, go and buy them immediately. Why? Because increase the portfolio return at the reduced risk or same risk. And if you have any portfolio which is sitting here, go and sell them immediately. Don't hold them. Followed, no? So in the above picture, B, C, D are the efficient portfolio. And among that, no, B is the optimum. Now, if I, if I ask you, okay, if I ask you before I proceed further, only one thing I will ask you. B is 5% risk, 12% return. How much C? How much more? Say 8% risk, 14% return. Now, who is efficient? How can you say? Are, your B is less risk, less return. C is more risk, more return. See, B, C, D are the most efficient among all the group. Why? Because these people are the one who will give you highest for the lowest. But other people are all useless people. Now among the three, now among B and C, who is best? You say, I can't say, tell sir. That goes with the risk of the person. No. Suppose some investor is there. He can go for B also, he can go for C also. Well, that's here choice. If somebody wants, no, sir, I want to take more risk, go for C. Somebody says less risk, B. Who is, okay, if I consider market as a whole, and if I consider market as a risk averse, they don't want to take much risk. Then B becomes optimum. Anybody we can straight away we can suggest. If some investor comes to you, sir, where I should invest? Irrespective of his, you assuming him to be risk averse. That means he doesn't want to take more risk. If you want to take optimum risk, you say go and invest in B. That's called optimum. This is called optimum. Below this, you don't find anything. Above thing you will find, but risk also will increase. That's why you don't have any investments here. Follow no? And this is, and when you plotted this in the form of a graph, this line is called efficient frontier. Frontier means the border. Frontier means the border which distinction, which is like a compound hall. After above up, within this compound wall, inefficient. Above that compound wall, efficient. So you have got efficient someone, put get them in your team. Inefficient people sitting in your route, send them, get out, out, out of my compound hall. Followed, no? So in the above, BC are the efficient, lying on the efficient frontier. The investor has to select a portfolio from the set of efficient portfolios. The attractiveness of the investment proposal lying on the efficient frontier depends upon the investor's attitude. Now, among B, C, D, which one? That is your attitude. At a point B, the risk of return is the optimum. The return is highest at point D, but risk is also highest. So thus the investor chooses the optimum portfolio based on the investors. Now, now you will choose among your utility functions, which one you want, you will choose. Okay, you will have certain sharp ratio, trainer ratio, all these things you must have developed, correct, no? Now, as a different investors have a different preferences, 
optimum portfolio of the security is going to change from one investor to another. So you cannot say that, oh, this is optimum. You can suggest, but it will change. Followed, no? Okay, friends. So we'll start with the another aspect of this portfolio management chapter, which is sharp single index model. And but before we proceed into this sharp index single index model, there was one small aspect left in the modern portfolio theory. So that is called a capital market line. Line. Okay. So in the previous session, we had learned about the efficient frontier, efficient portfolios. Okay, inefficient portfolios. So what is this capital market line? Capital market line. So we form a capital allocation line when we combine risky asset. See line, these are all the chart graphical representations. Now when we combine a risky asset with a risk free asset, that means what we do? Capital allocation. We take one risk free asset and something we invest in the bond because we don't want to keep everything in, in stock also. This represents the allocation between risk free and risky assets based on your risk preferences and the line which connects the risk free asset with the market portfolio is called a capital market line. As I said, it is a graphical representation. I will just show you how that capital market line will be formed and it is this equation will be used to decide the fund allocation. Now active and passive portfolio management, see in India there is a two types of portfolio management. Now a market can be informationally efficient, what do you mean by this? Okay, there is something called efficient market theory, we will discuss that in security analysis chapter. Informationally efficient means every information is available and market is fully efficient, there is no doubt, uh, there is no misinformation, there is no inefficiency. In such case, the quoted security price is unbiased. Est uh, is an unbiased estimate of all the future cash flows because since all the public informations are available to you what is the price of the security the intrinsic value all every information available about the future cash flows will have been discounted so if all the security prices reflect all public information there should not be any way to outperform because every participant know what should, what is the intrinsic value you can't fool someone it's not that nobody is unaware about the information. Since everybody knows, you can't earn any super or extraordinary profits. Say. If this is the investor's belief, then investing in the passive portfolio is the very simplest. And just re replicate the market. Then just invest with the Sensex. Don't try to invest in single securities because you can't really outperform. Everybody knows every history, every future about that particular company. This is called a passive portfolio. Many investors do not believe this. They say that no, no, sir, there should be some inefficiency. There is no free flow of info information. And they say active approach in overweighting the undervalued assets. That means they will try to buy more of over undervalued assets or and they will uh, under underweighting. That means they short sell the overvalued assets. And this is called uh, active management. So, if I join that optimal investment with a straight line, that starts with one point, which is my risk-free asset. And this line, which joins the expected return, which is the minimum, y, x is the risk, to the optimum portfolio, b, and that is called a capital market line. In efficient frontier, portfolio is the market portfolio, it is the optimum. This is the optimum market portfolio. If we say that this is a market that anybody can go here. If a line tangent to that point is drawn and extended to the uh, expected return, we get the RF and this is known as alpha. Remember, this is minimum. This is risk free. This is this will be their minimum. Anyhow, you do whatever you want to do on, on the earth. This is the minimum. That's called alpha. Graphically, a line that connects the market portfolio with the risk free represents the capital market line. Like I told you, this line graphically is called a capital market line. Risk averse investors will often select the assets that are risk free or near the capital market line. Just somewhere very near, no, they will choose here capital market line. Up to that, B. 
because they prefer low variance greater returns investors looking for higher returns will perform prefer portfolio with the higher more than that see b they will go for higher risk but whatever they will go they will go into that particular line only cml is used to determine the expected return of the portfolio look at the example something goes like this where i can use this cml to decide my expectation look i have got one this is my risk this is the risk of the market i said no my b is the optimum portfolio this is the risk of the b or market we can represent this b portfolio as a market portfolio if i am getting 10% and market is giving me 20% rm and this is the risk of the market for 10% risk i am getting 20% return suppose they said see a rational uh, risk averse is going to go for this somewhere very near the market because coming down below this is inefficiency okay these are inefficient because it will start from here now there is somebody wants to beat the market they will go for the higher higher thing more risk more return but it is not inefficient it is all efficient only now if somebody is ready to take 12% risk how much he can expect how much ah so we need an equation how much is the optimum see if my b m return is this point is optimum this is the minimum risk so this is the risk premium for investing in the market then if i want to invest in individual stocks definitely risk will be more than the market definitely i should be getting more risk premium how much is that i should be getting that's why there is one equation okay it's called a regression equation we are going to discuss about it that equation is y is equal to a plus bx that means y is the dependent variable say return should be equal to minimum 6 plus the beta times beta is something like change how much is something like a correlation beta is something like a correlation we will discuss that to x x is 12% so here in capital market like okay if you are expecting they you want to know what is your expectation no 6% minimum because the moment you go to the market like more than risk you feel you should get then how much risk premium you should get additional here it is 20 total market minus 6 see understand here the equation goes like this this risk premium okay you earn this additional risk premium no 20 minus 6 for what for 10 like proportionately if i want to take 12 how much additional risk premium so you get one equation and cal calculate 22.8% now question comes you have chosen reliance industries limited you know the reliance industries limited risk is 12% the only question comes now are they offering me 22% yes invest no don't do this or no so this is the efficient portfolio capital market line you used to take the decision so the equation will be expected return of the portfolio under capital market line will be risk free minus rm minus rf by the market risk into portfolio risk or that individual stocks risk so rm rf market risk and the portfolio risk this equation is clear no and this equation based is something like y is equal to a plus bx remember this equation this is called regression equation do you know what is regression do you want to know what is regression yes you have to know before we proceed into something called a single index model yes now we will discuss to the yes with the with this we are done with the portfolio modern portfolio theory now we will go to the single index model another version of the portfolio management so in single index model what we are going to learn we are going to learn something called a beta always we, are, we i was telling you in chapter security valuation chapter we are going to learn something called capm capital asset pricing model a model equation we have used ke is equal to rf plus beta into rm minus rf if you see that equation no 
we have used in circuit velocity is the same equation y is equal to a plus bx alpha total risk arbitrage pricing theory and sharp optimization framework these six aspects we are going to learn in the single index model why do we need something like a single index model when already Markowitz portfolio theory is there what is the need for that sharp to develop this why is it also efficient? He also gave a mathematical way to analyze the portfolio, no? Okay, why? Because there are certain problems in the Markowitz portfolio theory or modern portfolio theory. One, it is too much data demanding. Like you need to calculate expected return, standard deviation, covariance, what? Every single security. Suppose if your security is having 30, for portfolio is having 30 securities, then you need to find out the individual correlation between individual combination. Too much data, too much work. It is fine too difficult to find the correlation between two securities of different sectors. You don't understand. Okay, technically it will show you statistically, but really is there a correlation or not? It becomes very difficult and they will focus on the standard deviation, but unsystematic risk or internal risk, you can eliminate no, by your diversification. But MPT is focusing on the standard deviation. Standard deviation means the total risk. That means they are not giving focus on the systematic risk. Systematic risk cannot be eliminated with the diversification. So your focus should be on the systematic risk. Unsystematic risk, you have to assume, like when it comes to examination, what you need to be focused? Fundamentally, we will assume that you have practiced it thoroughly. But just practice is going to give you success. No, you need to try to predict. Just like you are trying to predict the shares, no? Share prices, you need to try to predict the institute strategies what they may do, which question, which subject they may make it tough. Somewhere you need to predict that. So that you can reduce that systematic risk. See that it is not going to affect you. But systematic, okay, single index model focuses on the systematic risk. Assuming that they have addressed the unsystematic risk through the diversification. If you are not done diversification, you are a fool. So the more you diversify, systematic risk, unsystematic risk will go. This model assumes a co-movement between the stock due to change or co-movement in the market index. So now something new comes called a market. Going forward, we are going to use this word called the market. See, this is that modern portfolio theory. See, if I have got just four security, not 30 or if not 40, just four security. See, I need a correlation between individual in all permutation and combination. Instead of that, somebody got one, the sharp got one idea. He said, look, you compare the individual stock's performance to the market. Understood? No? Now you can add 40, you know, 100 securities you can add and evaluate. And the more securities you go for, unsystematic risk will go off. So you only handle and focus on the systematic risk. Okay. Now, for this we need to understand something called a linear regression analysis. Or regression analysis. Linear means arranged in a straight line, lean line, linear. Followed, no? Regression, it is a measure of relationship between the mean value, mean means x bar, of one variable, say for example, independent variable, and the corresponding other variable, say y bar. Followed, no? See here, we have got two things. Instead of individual stocks, we are bringing something called a market, called a Nifty or Sensex. This is independent. I will call it by X, independent variable. And all these are dependent. I call it Y. The theory says that, look, Baba, you may be ultra performing. But if the Sensex goes down, you will also go down. Nothing doing. So, how much you go down, there is one proportion. It is not that every stock will equally go down. When Sensex increases, it is not that every stock will equally increase. It will change by beta factor. So calculate that beta, no. Predict your returns, change your beta. So regression is clear, no. Regression means it is a measure of the relationship, like correlation. We have no, we call it coefficient of beta because it is a measure. It's just, it will tell you one number, convexity, volatility, modified duration. It is one coefficient. It just tells me one number. 
it is a statistical method that tests the relationship between the dependent variable which we can call it y and the independent variable it is used to predict the dependent variable considering the relationship with the independent variable so we can do it anywhere any everywhere in life we can apply we can say our exam marks depends on my performance so performance is independent or dependent independent so marks should be equal to something minimum you will get no whether you prepare or don't prepare or if you don't prepare at all will you always get zero something you will get that depends upon already so much you know okay something you will write say a constant for your level of iq something definitely you are going to get plus beta times that means you need to figure out now relationship between you have to establish a relationship between how much preparation gives you how much marks based on the statistical information into number of hours you have put if you can establish this and if we can everywhere student i am telling you in day to day life also we can establish this everywhere this is called a regression analysis and here we try to predict the unknown variable by using a known variable market return is known if i know my market return what is the return on my stock if i know how much efforts i am going to put how many hours i am going to spend what may be my marks that's a regression it is used to predict the dependent variable example how much sales in the next year sales is the dependent variable and say season is there competition is there inflation is there year itself is one independent the more time you spend in the market the more sales are going to happen eventually that's why you know mtr says since 1924 it's the brand the you are there in the market for a quite long time that itself says that you are a consistent person and your sales are bound to go up in the long run follow no types of regression analysis there is two types of analysis one is called a simple linear regression where you take only one dependent and one independent but tell me is your marks depend only on your performance only on your uh, number of hours of preparation no it depends upon many other factors so if you are using only but among all which is the most important ah uh, that's why we say that it, we generally prefer, prefer for simple reg linear regression and this is what we call in portfolio management as a beta this is what that sharp told single index model single index means beta Single in index is your sensex. You take one index, one item. Check the beta of it. Look, add to the minimum what you are getting. You get the expectation. There is a multiple linear regression also. That is one dependent on many independent. And later we are going to discuss about something called the arbitrage pricing theory. That is nothing but a multi-linear regression, where multiple factors we are going to consider to decide the share price. so this is the dependent variable i will say y independent variable i'll say x i will plot all the values and i will draw one single straight line which probably go through all the lines here on an average basis okay this this line is calculated using least square method and it's, it it will start from a alpha same if you talk about in another language you call it sir it is the same capital market line no yeah it's the capital market line here in single index model it is called a regression line in statistics now the formula will be y is equal to a plus bx plus error standard deviation of error this is nothing but unsystematic risk beta is the systematic risk error is the unsystematic risk okay they said okay sir add one more element called unsystematic now this is called a error term regression analysis is just going to predict independent variable but it is never perfect correct no you can just predict okay if you have spent so many hours that so many number of preparations can you predict how much may be the mark can't you predict if you have prepared three times you can just predict but is it perfect no that is why you have to consider something called a error term error term is the figure that shows you the certainty 
with which you can trust your predictions. The error term is big, no? Then less certain your predictions. Error term is small, then somebody is more happy with your prediction, confident about prediction. It is almost impossible to predict a direct cause and effect in regression analysis. No, not possible only. By doing this analysis, you can never say that, okay, my marks depend only on this. Share price depends only on this. Okay. While the variable seems to be linked, it is possible that there is something else altogether. You are thinking this relationship, but actually there may be something else. And only by running multiple analysis, if you do like this so many analysis, then only we will be able to get a clear understanding of the factors involved. That's why it needs a keen observations. It needs a research into it. Okay, now I'll give you a practical example. Now, my first one, two, three, four, four year sales are there. Years are given and they are given first year sales, second year, third year, fourth year. Can you predict fifth year sale? If I write here year five, can you predict the fifth year sale? What is? 500. Great. Yes, students, I hope this is the same number you must be predicting. So, whoever has said 500, you are almost like Shakuntala Devi. You are like uh, Ramanujam. Human computer, I can, I am very much happy and surprised to see the human computers, correct, no? How, how can you predict so pred accurately? Okay, what if I say 100, 180, 200, 140, can you predict 50? Why? If Shakundala Devi is going to predict now instantly, that is called IQ. With a constant, see, somebody are born with that high IQ, they just look at it, they need not do the calculation, their mind does that calculation and say, okay, 240 is the number. This is their capability. No, but we are all ordinary people, no. We are born with some level of say 120 IQ. So, we need one equation to calculate. Okay, so what is that equation? Y, what is Y? Dependent variable, sales for the fifth year is equal to what from this data, what is that minimum sales I can expect? I don't know. We have to figure out now. That's called A plus what is the relationship between that year and the sales into what is the sales? Sorry, what is the year? 5. In the fifth year, how many times my sales are depending on the year? So, we follow the least square method and take x, we take y, x minus x bar. So, we get x bar here. How? Oh, sum of x by n. Sum of y by n, we get y bar. We got x bar, average. What is the average? Oh, sorry, this is not, uh, this is n, so, uh, sorry, sum of x. This is sum of y. Now, sum of x by n gives me average. This is x bar. x bar. Average we have not done. This is the total, right? This is the total, no? This is x bar. 1000 is my total of y. Average sale is 250. Average year is 2.5, average sale is 250. Now, I will find out x minus x bar, how much individual values will deviate from its mean. I will find out y minus y bar. x minus x bar whole square. Why? Because x is the dependent variable. x minus x bar into y minus y bar, what did I get? Total. The total divided by when n I do, I get covariance. If this covariance was divided by the standard deviation of x, standard deviation of y, what I would have got? I would have got correlation of x, y. But what I am going to do now? I am going to divide the same covariance by a market variance independent. This is x minus x bar, no. This is independent value. Then what I am going to get is not correlation, it is beta. 
it is the covariance for one independent fact. Understood the difference? Did you understood these calculations? X till covariance you have understood. When you have divided covariance with the two standard deviation, you got a correlation. Understood? Markowitz. Now, single index model says, look, we are, we are trying to predict, no? Same covariance, no? Instead of dividing by the standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y, you divide it by the market variance or standard deviation square of that independent variable, which is my independent variable here? Year. Year is nothing but x. So, if you divide covariance by the independent variable square, that means variance of independent variable, you get something called beta. This is what? Y is equal to a plus b x b. B is a beta, no? How many times? Your sales change depend upon the year. So, if I do that, I say that it is 100. That means year changes by 1 sales change by 100 followed okay then since i know what is my y what is y sales but as of now do i know my y yes y is nothing but y bar i have got my sale every sales no i have got x bar average year i know my beta also 100 so now in y is equal to a plus bx, the only equation left is this. I want to calculate a. So, what is a? a is equal to y minus bx. This I will bring this side. So, a is equal to 250 minus 100 times 2.5, 0. That means minimum no. Okay? Otherwise, you would have got something minimum. There is no minimum here. So, the equation to predict the future sales will be sales for any year will be 0 plus 100 times that year. Now, if I plot this, what is my fifth year sale? It is 0 plus 100 times 5, 500. So, if I have given you an odd number 128, 246, 421, you would have calculated the same way you would have got one constant which is alpha plus beta times the sales you would have said predicted. Understood? This process is called linear regression analysis and the regression values of alpha and beta, primarily beta, you calculate using least square method. This is least square method. Least square method. You figure out how much difference it is from the mean, how much is their covariance. But this time, since you want to find out beta, not a correlation, both are similar. Correlation is also similar, beta is also similar, but both are used in a different context. That's why it will give you, you have to divide it by the market variance or independent variance, independent variance. These are all statistical. Now, let us come to the beta. What is beta? Beta is a relationship for a change in the market return, which is x independent return, for a change in the and a change in the stock return, y. I think now you should be in a better position to get connected to what I am trying to tell here. It is a numeric value, it is a coefficient. I told you something you multiply it before one independent variable that measures the fluctuation of the stock due to change in the stock market and it is a measurement of volatility. It is also known as systematic risk because market is a systematic, no. It is not within your control. A positive beta means stock moves in the same direction. If market is up, stock is also up. Negative beta means it is like a negative correlation. Market moves in one direction, stock will move in another direction. So, what I should do? I should invest something in negative beta stock also. And zero beta, like risk free, independent of the market. That is why RF, beta of RF is always zero. Standard deviation of RF is always zero. 
risk free has got no risk free investment has got no standard deviation because you get what you expect risk free return risk free investments have got no beta because even though market goes for a toss it is not going to affect the return what you are going to get so the beta of the market is always one because market moves in one direction market moves in the same direction market to market is one low beta is low risk high beta is high risk it is also known as regression coefficient beta or beta coefficient See, they may call by different names no confusion the keyword is beta like correlation is the keyword you can call it by coefficient correlation beta is the keyword coefficient of beta or beta coefficient regression coefficient beta don't no confusion clear no now how to calculate the beta there are two methods to calculate one is called a correlation method another is called a regression method same method is what you get the same answer no but in different way you are going to get it now correlation method and regression method okay we will see that which of the two uh, uh, two methods like what are the equation okay now beta of a single stock if they give you only two period okay then two period data you need to check change in the stock return from one period period one to period two say stock price moved from 100 rupees to 200 rupees what is the change in the market return so market sensex moved from 4000 to 5000 what is the beta simple 100 by 1000 how much 0 0.1 is the beta or 0 0.10 is the beta a positive beta both are moved in the same direction this is a, when they give you only for two periods simple nothing we just write beta next what if they give you more than two period day and beta see we discussed that there are two methods called a correlation method and regression method beta can be calculated using correlation method or regression method okay if they give you more than two periods say five year data with the probability or past data whatever it is then under correlation method beta will be standard deviation of x divided by standard deviation of the market into correlation of x and m this is the equation you can use it it's the two method one of the method you can choose in the examination it's not hard it's there you have to use this method only followed no the equation will be standard deviation of x by standard deviation of market into correlation between stock and the market so what is the formula for correlation covariance by standard deviation of x into standard deviation of y can i replace this correlation with this equation standard deviation of x standard deviation of market into covariance by standard deviation of x into standard deviation of market standard deviation of x standard deviation of x gets cancelled so what remains covariance by market variance ah this is called a correlation method what just now we have seen no under regression method you can use one formula here both will give you same answer instead of calculating correlation covariance and all you can use a formula sum of x values into m value not x minus x bar m minus m bar not required this is another we can say shortcut also because if you want to go for this this correlation method you have to calculate x bar m bar x minus x bar m minus m bar m minus m bar whole square normal what we have done now for correlation then calculate covariance covariance correlation and then use this no sir this, i will use one more shortcut which ica also used okay i have gone for a long cut because it has got a same consistency with my markowitz portfolio theory followed no i have never used this equation no, if you say, sir, this equation is very easy. They ask me to calculate only bit. I will use this equation. Yes. What is that equation? Sum of x into m. No m. Oh, followed, no? Minus n times x bar into m bar. x into m minus n times x bar into m bar 
divided by sum of x square minus n times x bar square. Simple, no? With one equation, you will get the beta. Okay. Now, how to calculate the beta of the portfolio? With this, then we start the solving problem. Very easy. No here problem with related to correlation and all those things. How do you calculate the portfolio return? No, same way you calculate it, just the weighted average. Beta of A, weight of A plus beta of B into weight of B. Are you clear? Yes, students. So now we will start with the Q and A of this. So in principle, have you understood the concept of beta? Nice, no? Very interesting. Okay, so understand it. So under sharp index model, I said I will discuss about the calculation of the beta. CAPM expectation return. Already we have done that. RF plus beta times RM minus RF. Capital asset pricing. Okay, whether expected return is more than actual return. You can call it alpha also, A. Total risk, systematic risk and unsystematic risk. Crux, tricky part, the most tricky I can say. Arbitrage pricing theory, it's the same thing. In beta or in CAPM, we use only one variable called a beta, which is market. In arbitrage pricing theory, other than this, we will use inflation or political instability, say for example other factors. Sharp optimization framework, there is only one question to calculate the optimum, like in Markowitz portfolio theory, did we end up with the selection of optimum portfolio, efficient portfolio? We decided, no? Uh, same way, in Sharp index model also, he has given one equation to calculate one optimum portfolio. Okay, first we will start with question number 23. Company's beta is 1.4. Market return is 14%, RF is 10%. What is the expected return of CAPM? If the RM pre risk premium, risk premium, see I under, again I want to remind you, say in my equation expected return of CAPM is equal to RF plus beta into RM minus RF. This portion is called MRP market risk premium because it is investing in the market rm minus rf you remember that in the capital market line we took this but when you multiply is the beta beta is related to individual stock its relation to the market this whole portion is called equity risk premium e r p there are two terminologies called mrp and erp both are called risk premium. RP is involved in both the name. So you have to be watch very carefully what type of premium they are trying to tell. Risk premium, then there is a problem. Is it a market risk premium or cap equity risk premium? Take an assumption. But if they tell you very specifically market risk premium, you can't take an assumption. Otherwise you can take any assumption. If the risk premium on the market goes up, by 2.5 percent. Which risk premium they are talking here? Market risk premium. Market. What would be the revised expected return of his stock? Okay. So, this is not a beta problem. This is a CAPM problem. So, right. What is your expected return? Expected return. Basically, RF is 10 plus 1.4 into 14 minus 10. 14 minus 10 is 2, uh, 4 is equal to you get 15.6 percent. Second scenario, expected return is equal to, did your risk free return changed? Change? Ah. What if they say inflation changes? You remember there was one problem 9 percent, inflation change by 2 percent in security valuation. So, in that inflation we added to RF also. So, you have to be careful what they are trying to tell. No, my RF did not change. So, it remains 10 percent only plus did beta change? No. Market risk premium change that means market return 16.5 minus 10 or 
what is your MRP? 4. Add 2.5. It becomes 6.5. It's MRP now. And you solve this, you get 19.1%. Easy. Nineteen point one percent. Clear, no? Okay. So we'll move on to the next question. Risk premium for the market is ten percent. Which risk premium they are talking? Market risk premium. Assuming beta values of zero point two five point four to one, compute the risk premium on security K. Risk premium on security means equity risk premium. What is my RF? What is RF? Zero. Not given means should I assume two percent? Yeah, it is the market risk premium. RF. So RF is have they told you RF? RF is zero. Even though they were told 2% is my RF, this is risk of premium for the market. No, so it is you have to assume that don't minus again 10 minus 2. It is after minusing 2, you got 10. Followed, no? So if your beta is 0, what is your ERP equity risk premium? It's a simple question, okay? What is your ERP? Zero. Why? Because it is zero plus zero times n. If it is zero point two five, that means low beta. That's why no. See, if when your beta is zero, when you are a risk-free asset. So when you are risk-free asset, then there is no question of expectation from the market. No, you never invested in the equity, so that you will not be compensated. If beta is point two five, that means very small beta. So you have to multiply with the 10, 0 plus 0 0.25 into 10, you get 2.5%. Simple, 0 0.42 means 4.2%. Ah, now understood now. 1 means 10%. Ah, that means when your beta is 1, it will move exactly in line with the market. Then what you can expect is what market is going to give you. And unsystematic risk is gone because you are diversified. Yeah, actually these are all not beta calculations. Yeah, probably I may, might have shifted it to the later part also. That capital asset pricing. These are all capital asset pricing problem model problems. Understood, no? No confusion there. Next, treasury bills gives 5%. What is this? RF. And you see the word called market return in the question, you understand it is single index. Huh? Because Mark, Markowitz never used that word called, modern portfolio didn't use that word, market return. Market return means RM. RM means your CAPM. CAPM means sharp index model. What is the market risk premium? Simple. 13 minus 5. MRP is 8%. Okay, right, solution. MRP is equal to 13 minus 5. Eight percent. First part of the question is done. Compute the beta and required return for the following combination of investment. So if you are going to invest treasury bills 100, market you never invested only. What is the beta? Beta is 0, no? Zero. Okay, so first part is done. Second, they asked me what do we need to calculate both beta as well as expected return. Okay, right. Portfolio 1. Second. Portfolio 1. Write the heading portfolio 1. What is your ratio of investment? 
100 is to 0. 100 is in the risk free, 0 is the RF is to market. So now they asked you to calculate the beta. What is beta of this portfolio? 0. Why? 100% you are invested in risk free, no, 0. So what is your expected return? It is 5% plus 0 times MRP is 8%. Okay, it's not percentage, huh? don't multiply it as a percentage. It is per percent means number only, it's number, we are just showing you as a num percentage here. Otherwise, what is this 5% plus? This gives me 5%. That means if you are investing 100% in risk free, what you can expect is only risk free only, no? Okay, will anybody give you more than risk free? No. Second, if you invest 17 to risk free, 13 to market, what is your beta? It is 0 plus 0 0.3 into 1, no? Beta of the market is what? 1. Beta of the risk free is 0. So if it is the ratio of weight is 70 30, see, second portfolio is what? 30. 70 is risk free, 30 is market. Now you have to calculate the beta. See, now the moment you have invested 70 30, did you get one portfolio there? And the beta, what is the portfolio beta weight? How to calculate the beta of the portfolio? The last part did we see? I said no. The way you calculate expected return of the portfolio, you calculate it. Okay, that means you need two elements. One individual items beta and the weight. Do you have the beta of risk-free asset? Yes. How much? Zero. Do you know the beta of the market? Always one, remember. I told, in the theory I told, beta of the market is one. Because you are comparing you to yourself, no. Who is better? You are better or yourself is better? Who is better? You are better or yourself is better? You say, sir, it's same, no. So, when I am talking about beta, beta of the market is 1. Now, you take how much you invested in market? 30%, no. Take 30% of that one, point three. So, since some investment go into market, now risk premium required. So, 5 plus 0 0.3 times 8. Always, okay, we, we can do going forward, we will remove this percentage. We will make a habit or practice not to give this percentage. 5 plus, is it 5 percent plus uh, 7.4. See, now if I invest in RF, I can expect not more than RF. But if some portion of my portfolio I divert to the market, I will expect a premium. Which premium it is? Market risk premium. And it is equity risk premium also. Because you are investing not in the stock. You are investing in the market. That's why you cannot expect more than what Sensex is going to offer to you. Third, understood, no? 30, 70, oh, big portion is going to go into 0 plus 0 plus 0 0.7 into 1. 0 0.7 is the beta now. So, 5 plus 0 0.7 times 8 is equal to 10.6 percent. And the fourth scenario, if you 0 is to 100 percent, if you invest, beta is 0 plus 0 0.1, sorry, 1 into 1. It's 1. Or not required, calculation not required. 100 percent investment in the market. So, beta is 1. So, it is 5 plus 1 times 8, that is 13 percent. Did you get RM? What is the RM? 13 percent. Your RM is also 13 percent, no? So, if you invest yourself in the market, what you can expect is what Sensex is going to give. But if you invest in stock, whose beta is not 1 and beta is going to be more than 1, then your expectation will be more than 1. Did you understood this beautiful equation? How somebody invented this? Next, treasury bills we already discussed in security valuation chapter. These are all the 
short term bills as of now 91 days 182 days and 364 days bills are issued and only central government issued the treasury bill government securities or dated securities bonds can be given by the state government also central government also for 20 years 40 years also it will reach now minimum amount of investment is 25000 and how do they do they do something called bidding what is this non competitive bidding that means to promote the small players like me investors who want to invest 25000 rupees there's no point in bidding no so what they do whichever yield or the price gets finalized that day based on the say our, uh, some lic is going to bid they will allot me on that weighted average, weighted average of the yield of the auction. Why we are learning? Okay, let us go to the next question. Per limited expects that considering the current market price, equity shareholders should get a return of at least 15.5%. What is this? Equity shareholders should get a return of at least 15.5%. That means expected returns. I am expecting by investing in their shares of per limited, I am expecting 15.5%. RBI and the current return of the market, what is this 12%? RM. And what is this 15.5? ER. Expected. This is what I am expecting from that. This expected return can be an average return also. This is what it has been doing, X bar, maybe. RBI has closed the latest auction of 2500 crores, 182 trade bill, and the lowest bid is 4.3%. Also, there were bidders at a higher of 4.6 also for a lot less than 10 crores. Why they give this information? RF. Now, is RF 4.3 or 4.6? Huh? Your choice. You, you have to look into the question what type of investor he is. Is he an aggressive investor, moderate investor, or risk averse investor? So that you have to be careful. Is the question telling anything about an investor? No, that is your choice. Now you take 4.3, 4.6, or 4.4, or for whatever, average between 4.3 plus 4.6, 4.44. It is your choice. But if you get one hint that this investor is an aggressive investor, you have to choose 4.6. Because he is expecting more. Okay, right. Solution. First thing I need to work out the working note number one. Calculation of RF. Aggressive investor. It is 4.6% higher end. Conservative will take 4.3%. Moderate will be 4.45%. Now, unless if the question is very silent, you can take anything, whatever you want. Tell me what you will take. Moderate. Okay, suggested answer also has taken a module. So, second calculation of beta, they asked you to calculate the beta, no? So, expected return 15.50 is equal to 4.45 plus beta times 12 RM minus 4.45. If you solve this equation, okay, you know this is a very simple equation, correct? 4.45 you bring this time, 12 times beta minus beta into 12 minus 4.45 is 7.55 beta. You solve this equation, 11.05 by 5, 7.55 you get Clear?
Yes. So we'll move on to the next question. Following information is available with respect to JK Limited. JK Limited 2002, 3, 4, 5 years they have given. The share price, dividend price per share they have given. So this is I can call it Y. Follow? No, you can call it J also. Y is a dependent variable. Dividend per share is given. Average index of the market, I call it X, independent variable. We will call it M. We can call it J and M. Dividend yield is given on that market return. And return of the government bond is also given. Different, different years. What is the beta value of the company at the end of 2005? Have they told you which method to follow? Correlation method or regression method? They have not told you any method. Okay, so we can choose any method here. Dividend, okay, some comment I have given, is given in percentage. Eh? And we need to add the same to index percentage returns. In new study material solution is given after illustration, in, no observation is given. Okay, they asked you certain observations. Okay, so they have not given the observations. I will show you that observation. Yes, friends. So we we'll solve this equation. First of all, what we need? We need the percentage return. No, or at least amount return. We have seen that that uh, this thing we can calculate either in the amount as well as in percentage also. Which we will go for, we will go for a percentage, except those two questions, where we calculated the rupee return standard division. Okay, so calculation of the stock returns, can we calculate for the first year? 2002, can we calculate? No, it is the first year, no. So I start with the, sorry? No, even though they will give me dividend and all, I cannot calculate. I will go for the second year. So, 2003, what is my closing price of the second year? 279 minus 242 is the opening price plus 25 dividend I get. Now, question comes, what is this return? Rupee return or a percentage return? What do you want? Rupee or percentage? This is rupee, but what do you want? Percentage. I said no. Only those two questions, because ah, we can choose it, but what my suggestion is, wherever they have done, do we try to do it the way they have done it? They have done that, no, they are not told anywhere, no. You remember only those questions were that the price and dividend joint probability we calculated, no, only in those two problems only they did rupee, every places they did percentage only. Those two problems only you do rupee if it comes in the exam, every place you do percentage. They stole there. Alternatively, you could have done in percentage also, they told. Followed, no? Ah, divided by 242 into 100. Then 2004, 305 minus 279 plus 30. Divided by 279 into 100 gives you 20.07%. And 2005, 322 is the closing price minus 305 plus 35 divided by 305 gives you 17.05 percent. Similarly, what we should do now? We have to calculate the stock return, market returns also. So, what is my, write the heading year, market returns, year, calculation returns. So, first 2003, I have got 1950 closing minus 1180, yeah, 1812. Is there a return? Yes, dividend return, but I will add it to the, because they gave me in percentages. Dividend yield, they have given me in percentages. So, that I am going to add to the returns only, divided by 1182. 812 into 100, I get 7.72 percent, dividend yield 5 percent, so total is 12.62 percent, understood? I am going to add to that only. Similarly, second year 2258 minus 1950, I get 15.79, 15 
third year 2 to 2 to 0 minus 2 to 5 8 the previous one in divided by 2 to 5 8 i get minus 50 1.68 add a dividend yield to it you got 12.62 21.79 5.32 Okay, so now we have calculated both the returns, correct? Market return and the stock return. Now we will calculate the beta. Okay, we will do one thing. We will compare both the methods. Regression method also, correlation method also. First we will start with the correlation method. Yes. So first write x. What is x here? Or you can write j. J is the return from j, stock j, correct? Okay, write the heading calculation of beta. J, j is nothing but return from stock j, how much? 25.62. 20.07, 17.05. What is the total of this? 20.9. Total. J or X, whatever you can call. Oh, sorry, not uh, sorry, not total. Huh? The total is comes to it's the average I have taken. 25.62 plus 20. 0 0.07, 17.04, 0 62.74. And what is the average? 20.91. Okay, so J bar will be 20.91, correct? Which is nothing but 62.79 divided by N. Then we will calculate J minus J bar because it is easy, no? Now only to do. So it comes to 4.71 minus 0 0.84 minus 3.86. Do we need j minus j bar whole square? Yes. Okay. We do need not. Uh, we don't need also because we can use another uh, formula. There are two formulas. Okay. For timing, we'll do, we can do it. We'll calculate both the j minus j bar whole square because we can calculate the standard deviation correct see in the examination question you can skip this so it comes to 22.18 0 0.71 14.90 how much is the total 14.90 37.79, correct? You take, what is the variance now? Divided by 3, 12.59 or 12.60. Square root standard deviation of J will be, take a square root of this. You get 3.55. Done? Yes, this is one portion. Then you take M, market return. How much? 12.62. 21.79, 5.32, what is M bar? 13.24, then M minus M bar, 12.62 minus 13.04, 0 0.62 minus 0 0.62, 8.55, and minus 7.92. Then you have to do m minus m bar whole square to find the standard deviation. Correct? 0 One thirty six point two one. 
So what is the variance? Divided by 3, 45.4 into 3, 45.4 square root, standard deviation of m, 6.74. Followed, no? Yes. Now we will take covariance we need. So at j minus j bar into m minus m bar. So, 4.71 into 0 0.62, 2.92, minus 2.92, minus 7.18 and 30.57. So, you add this, you get 20.47, correct? What is covariance? Divided by 3. 20.47 by 3, you get 6.823. So, this is your water covariance. Yes, did it ask me correlation? Not required. So, what is my beta? Beta is covariance by market variance. Market variance is here. See, this one, square of this, 45.40. So, beta is 6.823, right? Beta is equal to covariance by market variance or standard deviation of stock divided by standard deviation of market into correlation. You have to calculate one more item now. Why you want to calculate correlation? So, if you then you can ask me, sir, if a correlation was not required, then why on earth you calculated this? Why standard deviation of J was required? Not required. That's what I'm trying to tell you. First only that it is not required. So covariance by market variance, how much you get? 6.823 divided by 45.40. You get 0 0.15 as the as the beta. Understood how to calculate beta? This is least square method under correlation. Only thing is correlation we didn't calculate. Followed, no? Now, there is an alternative method called a regression method. If you, okay, you can just note down this, or maybe you can try it later. Yes, so what is this expected return of CAPM? We have already used it from starting from security valuation, correct? But individual components we didn't discuss the, what it is, how it is. Somewhere we discussed at the time of calculation of beta about the regression analysis. And we said beta calculation, how it is related. See, your bank is offering you 5%. You have got 1 lakh rupees to invest. Bank will offer you 5%. Is there, is there a risk? Is there a risk? No. They will give you. So, standard deviation of RF is 0. Bank will definitely pay you 500, 5 rupees, uh, 5 percent, and on the due date, they will give you a principal back. Is it a beta? What is the beta of RF? Zero. Because if the stock market changes, you know, tomorrow if the stock market crash, will the bank tell you I will not pay you? No. So my RF is 5 percent. That means without any risk, I am going to get a standard return of 5 percent. Now, the stock market, how much it is going to give you? So, say for example, now Reliance Industry says, chairman comes and calls you, Are, why you are investing in bank? Keep money with me. No, you see a lot of advertisements, lot of jewelry. Some people will call, do you want loan? Do you want to keep a deposit? So, Reliance Industry says, I am paying you 10%. Why don't you invest in me? I am going to double. Will you invest in Reliance? Huh? Ah, then you say, say, see, you can't treat the return in isolation. No. You have to see, look, why he is giving you more return? Because there is an element of risk. How much? How much? That's why, what, what is the risk now? There are two types of risk called systematic and unsystematic risk. Now, we will assume that for time being that unsystematic risk we are going to eliminate by diversification. We are concerned only with the systematic risk. Now, 5 percent the minimum I want. Is he giving is okay with me or not? 
I will see multiply the return of the market over risk free with the stocks beta. And this portion is called a risk premium, which is nothing but equity risk premium, ERP. This is called MRP. Followed, no? Now, if the return of the market is 10%, say BSC and Sensex itself is 10%, will you ever invest in this reliance? If BSC itself, if, Sensex, if Nifty or Sensex gives you 10%, will you invest in Sensex or will you invest in Reliance? You will say, sir, I will invest in Sensex. Why? Sensex is well diversified. Risk is less because the risk of Sensex is one. What is your risk? Now comes, if I understand that whenever Sensex changes, no, this will behave 22 times. Like mm, Sensex up by 10%, Reliance also will change by 20%. If it is down by 10%, Reliance will be down by 20%. So I say beta is 2, no? then whatever market will give you in excess of the RF. Uh, that is why there is a need for me to come to you. When your bank is offering 5%, I would have invested in BSC. But if you tell me, sir, please invest in my share, which is a risky for me, because diversification concept doesn't come here. I need to face a lot of unsystematic risk. Probably, I want two times the market risk premium. Then only I will come. That is, can you give me 15%? I will invest in your company. If you can't give me 15%, I'm not going to invest in your company because it, see, traditional approach of investment, we started in this portfolio management, people were concerned only with the return. Somebody will put an advertisement, double the money, people flock there. Correct, in TV also they say, sit, there's some fund business and all, some uh, ladies are talking and they say, in serial and all, they say, oh, there's one scheme to double, scheme, okay, please make us member, go on. People were traditionally looking at the return, but as a modern portfolio manager, you have to evaluate the risk involved in that. That makes sense to you. You say, if you can give me 15%, I will return. Yes, you ha we had discussed up to the beta of the portfolio. You can take out your chart book, beta of the portfolio. See, we understood how to calculate the beta of the individual stock. And then we have understood how to calculate the beta of the portfolio. It is very simple, just like my expected return of the expected uh, return of the portfolio. Now, beta management. What is beta management? We already did that. Here we are going to change the beta of the portfolio. How? By if you expect the market is going to increase, you are going to raise the beta of the portfolio. And if you think the market is going to fall, you will reduce the portfolio beta. How? By using either the risk-free assets or by borrowing. That means you borrow money, invest on the high beta stocks. So if the if you think bull phase is going to come, you leverage. Or if you think recession is going to come, you sell some of the shares, invest in the risk-free assets. Transfer from one stock to another or using stock index future, which is derivative, which we will see in the next chapter. So in using this beta for investor decision, the investor is assuming that the relationship between security variability and the market variability is going to continue. So whenever you are using the beta and doing all these adjustments in your portfolio, you know, your expectation is, yeah, whatever you passed is going to continue in the future also. If the past has shown a trend of beta 2 for Reliance Industries, that means market change by 1, Reliance Industries will change by 2. Based on that expectation, you included the Reliance Industries in your portfolio when you are expecting a bull phase. Then we discussed about the capital asset pricing model. We discussed it theoretically. Unsystematic risk can be diversified. So the relevant risk to decide the price of the share is the non-diversible component. That is the, your expectation. See what happened, Markowitz, modern portfolio theory told only X bar. That is your expectation. But in CAPM, we just don't go with the X bar. What stock offers? You try to justify that, whether what stock offers to you, is it as per one uh, regression analysis model, y is equal to a plus bx or rf plus beta into rm minus rf. So this is what you try to do and beta is the indicator of a systematic risk. If the return of a security is taken as a dependent variable return on the market, so we are going to arrive at this equation. 
using this equation you say what is your expectation on the return and this required return we don't call it ke we call it ke for this as a discounting factor only in security valuation we call it the expected return as per capm this is something like x bar average return of the stock this is what it has actually given or what you can expect this is what you can expect as per one model capm can be expected as a model so it provides a conceptual framework for the investment decisions and the returns required from a single investment or from a portfolio of assets also because we learned how to calculate the expected return of the portfolio using capm by calculating the individual stock capm or beta of the portfolio so it will help you to decide whether to purchase the asset hold the asset or sell the asset so there can be two capm there is only one risk free rate and when there are more than one variables okay so you can take an aggressive approach high or a conservative or low we have seen that one of the question three interest rates were given see three interest rates i cannot take i need to take only one so either i depending upon the question which type of investor are you if you are a moderate investor you take the mean thus individual investor has to look into non diversifiable portion that is beta systematic risk to develop the expectation don't develop your expectation based on the standard deviation this is what this sharp index model is trying to tell standard deviation is based on the return what is actually obtained from the stock don't develop based on that look what market is offering look what rf is offering look what is the relationship and then you expect the returns so if the investment is as risky as the stock market then the risk premium is nothing but the market risk premium then erp is going to become mrp because your stock is as equally beta of the stock is 1 the risk premium on the stock varies direct proportion to beta if mrp is 6% beta is 2 then erp will be 12% because your stock is double the market risk then comes the concept of a security market line they will ask you to draw a security market line it is something very similar to capital market line we discussed drawing one tangent line against the frontier efficient frontier what is security market line it is the graphical representation of capm is a security market line that's the same no in capital market line we started with rf plus rm minus rf by standard deviation of the market into standard deviation of the portfolio this is what we did okay something similar we are going to discuss here also this line indicates the return required to compensate a given level of risk so for me market gives you me one at rm beta is one if my rf is here depending upon you can decide what is your expected return higher the beta value higher would be your expected return and higher is the risk premium so the equation will be rf plus beta into rm minus 1 now if the stock return is above security market line then see if the actual return comes here this is what you are expecting ah then the stock is overperforming security is underpriced so you have to buy it why you need this graphical representation to take decisions you just see what is your expectation versus what is the actual results have we done that in one of the problem they asked what is your observation ha ah, then we actually calculated the capm return we compared with the actual return so that is nothing but graphically we can do it like this if that exactly lies that means your expected return on capm is actual return then it is correctly priced this way you decide the pricing and if it is below the security market line it is yielding less and you are going to sell it now there is one thing called a security characteristic line See, we learned now capital market line security market line both are same okay Sim uh, not same uh, sorry similar what is security market line the characteristic line is the graphical representation of security returns and the market returns see your security market line is beta and returns on y axis return x axis risk but here characteristic line you are going to plot stock return on the y axis 
market return on the x axis so characteristic line is used you are going to use an equation y is equal to a plus bx to decide the characteristic line so they will ask you draw one characteristic line that means you have to give this equation this equation is expectation sales for the first year is equal to minimum sales a plus say one constant coefficient 100 into num n which is the year fifth year this gives you expected sales like stock price is equal to say alpha we call it, call it risk free plus beta times expected return from the market so ex this is the security market line equation this is the characteristic line equation both if you see both are similar no it represents the relationship between return and risk systematic risk it return security return and the market return it is used for estimating the expected return of a security it helps to estimate the beta this equation you can calculate the beta value so we will continue with the theory and we will just discuss about the alpha also then we can start solving all the related problem this alpha is also called a jensen's alpha capm model can be practically used to buy or sell that already we discussed pricing capital asset pricing so you are going to compare actual with the expected so what is alpha the difference between the actual return and expected return as per capm is the alpha so if your alpha is positive that means you are going to get more return than what you expect buy it if alpha is negative sell it and if alpha is zero that means your actual return is equal to expected return correctly priced so there is another angle to evaluate the price price is equal to d1 by ke minus g this is what we did in security valuation chapter where ke we calculated using capm this is another way to price it based on the discounts so if the theoretical price p0 is greater than the actual price see, see the question here is what with what what to compare if they are not given you the price if they are not given the dividend you can never calculate the price then actual return percentage you compare with the expected return percentage but if they give you market price and say whether it should be buy or not ah, then you have to calculate theoretical price using dividend and if the theoretical price is greater than the actual price, buy it. Theoretical price equal to actual price, hold it. Theoretical price is less than the actual price, that means it is overpriced, sell it. Yes, the next concept of total risk we will see after we solve some problem. Now we will come to the main part of the second portion. It is called the total risk, systematic risk and unsystematic risk level. And okay, so you have to understand this thoroughly. Okay. See now, the total risk of a single stock. What is this concept of a total risk? We already discussed that risk is nothing but the standard deviation. Standard deviation, so what they would say, no? The standard deviation, what you say, like this, this particular standard deviation, we cannot talk in the standard deviation because it is square rooted value. We will talk in terms of variance. That is called total risk understand total risk of a stock is nothing but its variance total variance is total risk now question comes can somebody explain that this total risk is made up of two components why this deviation came what is risk actually risk is what is risk deviation from the mean expectation now this is the total deviation from the mean variance the two reasons for this is systematic risk and unsystematic risk now i want to understand how much portion of the variance is caused by like see if if i i was expecting 60 marks okay say my my problem my question only in mafa i was expecting 70 marks i got 40 marks what is this 30 risk no anything could have happened one more mark goes down means gone now question comes, I am interested to know why there are two reasons. It is institute's mistake, it is my mistake. Now what I should find out? My, no, first let me find out institute's mistake. Okay, 
see my mistake it is assumed understand after doing three or four times of revision it is assumed that unsystematic risk is eliminated that's why there is no point in analyzing this becomes a balancing figure now if i can figure out how much institute has reduced my mark automatically balances my effort only you know whom i can blame there so i have to figure out now is there any element of the systematic risk which has changed my total expectation the deviations so there are some equations for this okay and then comes again my portfolio this is what total risk of the stock similarly i have got a group of stock what i call for that portfolio from portfolio also i start expecting something big weighted average return i didn't get it why two reason systematic risk and systematic your job is simple first you find out how much is portion cash cost by the market by beta factor balance because you are no no whom you will go and blame there balance you take for you, yourself nice no okay so now first we will figure out what is my equation for calculation of the total risk total risk is always simple when you calculate stock variance this is the stock standard deviation it's a variance it's called total risk because it should be analyzed in uh, square only systematic risk is what it is the risk of the market into beta factor simple that means if market has changed by 10% say risk of the market how much your stock got reduced it will change by beta factor so if this is my systematic risk calculation this is my unsystematic error no balancing figure i am only responsible detection risk understood this is and for a single stock okay if it is a single stock systematic risk is the unsystematic risk is always the balancing figure because we cannot calculate this understand it is always balancing figure if follow okay now how do we calculate the total risk of the portfolio now the equation changes there are two methods one you have to cal you can cal can you calculate the systematic risk of the portfolio easy how you calculate the beta of the portfolio into market risk for you whether it is the beta or whatever it is it is the beta factor no but what is the unsystematic risk of the portfolio that's what there are two methods one you calculate the variance of the portfolio using modern portfolio theory what is that standard deviation of a square into weight of a square standard deviation of b square into weight of b square plus two times standard deviation of a into weight of a weight of b into standard deviation of b into correlation one uh, you just remove the square root you got the so which whose square root you need to remove portfolio risk not not individual follow no so if you rem if you square the standard deviation of the portfolio you get the portfolio follow but if you look into it there is no direct relationship between two unsystematic risk of a stock see you wanted correlation no this is total risk of the portfolio but for this you need a correlation between a b is there any correlation between unsystematic risk see this is stock a understand this is stock b both are related to the market so if market changes stock a will change is there any uh, direct relationship between stock b and beta between a and b ha huh, markowitz said there is a relationship correlation if you figure out but, but infosys i have got in my portfolio infosys and reliance industry if fire happens in reliance see both have got a beta but if the fire is going to happen in reliance industry or management is doing fraud in say geetanjali gems is the price of the uh, what is it called infosys should get affected because those all fire mismanagement fraud these are all unsystematic error no so what is the relationship there is no relationship but we can establish an indirect relationship between stock a and stock b how so we said that there is no relationship no so portfolio's risk is equal to since there is no direct beta to beta relationship everything becomes zero so portfolio risk 
is equal to weight of a square into standard deviation of a square plus weight of b square into standard deviation of b square. So, unsystematic risk of the portfolio is equal to this. This is the unsystematic. That means you just take individual stocks unsystematic risk and square it. You get the portfolio's unsystematic risk. Individual stocks unsystematic risk is there. Okay. You didn't understood. Okay. I will ask you one simple question. I have got A, stock A, whose standard deviation is 8%. I have got stock B, whose standard deviation is 7%. Now I have got it 50%, 50%. I will ask you only one simple question. What is my standard deviation of the portfolio? Anna, first thing you will ask me one thing. Sir, what is the correlation between them? I say 1, what you will do, perfect positive. Then you say, sir, it is standard deviation of A, because we are talking variance, no? We are talking invariance, right? Standard deviation of A square into weight of A plus standard deviation of B square weight of A. Simple. Wait, where? I need not, I should not square it. Understand here, if I am looking portfolio variance or portfolio standard deviation, not variance, sorry, not portfolio variance, portfolio standard deviation is this equation for co perfect positive correlation. But here, this is possible only when the correlation is perfect positive. What if alternatively what I can do? I can use this equation A square into weight of A square plus b square into weight of, sorry, weight of b square into 2 times weight of a into weight of b into standard deviation of a into standard deviation of b into correlation of a b. Now, what if I, if I make it 0? Because what I am trying to find out, portfolios error risk, not portfolio risk. Portfolios total risk, same problem. What we have done there, same thing total risk, but error risk, no, same equation I need to use, but since there is no direct relationship, no, is there any correlation between the risk, what is it called, error standard deviation, no, that is why this entire line goes off. So, if I need to take out what is my portfolio's error standard uh, uh, risk of the portfolio, take out the square root, you end up getting weight of A square. That is the one extra thing, understand. It is not that perfect positive correlation. This is the difference. We are learning some new equation again here. It is not the same equation. Followed, no? So, under method 1, you have got individual stocks, say S1. Say stock A is there, stock B is there. You calculate the systematic risk of A, systematic risk of B individually, then you can calculate the beta of the portfolio and then you can calculate the systematic risk of the beta of the portfolio. But when it comes to individual stocks, A error, always it is the balancing figure. But when it comes to the portfolio, what you can do is, you have got two method. Method number one, since unsystematic risk of individual stock is already available, you take the weight of it, weight of that square you get the unsystematic risk of error portfolio square. But the only difference here is when you have taken error of A, you have to multiply with the weight of A square. That is the only difference here. This is method 1. Now you say, sir, no, I do not want with this method. Then you can do with one more method here. Correlation of AB. Since I said there is no direct relationship. If you say that sir, there is no unsystematic relationship, then this becomes 0. Then you will go with this equation, this, this, this equation. But if you say, no sir, there is an indirect relationship, uh -huh. then what do you need to do? What is the correlation between A, B? 
it is correlation am into correlation bm now i will calculate the total risk of the portfolio how St square root standard deviation of a square into weight of a square plus standard deviation of b square into weight of b square plus 2 times a into weight of a standard deviation of b into weight of b into correlation of ab which is nothing but am into correlation of bm with this you can calculate this and again unsystematic risk you can make it a balancing figure see when you come to individual stock unsystematic risk is always balancing figure there is no equation to calculate it but when you are talking about the portfolio's unsystematic risk there are two ways one you have got individual stocks unsystematic risk is there take the weight square of that because we are analyzing everything in variance it becomes unsystematic risk of the portfolio add systematic risk of the portfolio you got the total risk or find out the total risk of the portfolio by finding out the correlation between am and rm bm then minus the unsystematic risk have you understood clear no this is the if you ask me like in every chapter there is one crux you know the most like previously in security valuation which was that multi period dividend discount model catch tricky this is that particular area you will find now different different type of question now you have to understand one or two formula derivations see what is the covariance of ab formula we have already discussed standardization of a into standardization b into correlation of ab correct and what is correlation of ab am into bm so covariance can i replace covariation of correlation of ab with am and bm and can i put it like this a into correlation of am b into b correlation of bm does it change the answer no because everywhere i have got a multiplication so it doesn't matter whether how i interchange it so now what i will do i will put one bracket for this divide this a by standard deviation of the market multiply by the standard deviation of the market does it change my answer my standard deviation standard deviation get cancel now if i look into this equation what is this equation correlation of am into standard deviation of a divided by standard deviation of market beta into standard deviation of market beta of b into standard deviation of market or covariance of ab if they have given me beta of a and b simply multiply beta of a and b into market variance you get the covariance of ab same so you have to remember this equations now we are getting added with these equations so we are deriving certain new equations using known equations only understanding making certain assumptions and everything starts with the correlation of ab is correlation of am into correlation of bm now if i go to the portfolio risk of a we are given this traditional formula now can i change this correlation of ab into what is this correlation of ab it is standard deviation of a into standard deviation of b into correlation of ab which is nothing but correlation can i convert into covariance by removing this by removing these can i put into covariance yes instead of covariance can i either i can use correlation or can i use beta of a into beta of b into market variance See, just now we derived no covariance means what what is another formula for covariance beta into beta b market variance there is one more formula derivation it's called a coefficient of determination how many coefficient we discussed till now you start we begin from in the security evaluation did we come across anything called a coefficient no which is the first coefficient we learned in portfolio management chapter it's called a coefficient correlation uh, you understand correlation but when i use the word co coefficient is a just a generic term okay everywhere i use that don't get confused for you coefficient correlation is important then second which coefficient we did we discussed mm one is coefficient of correlation we discussed then another coefficient we discussed ah coefficient of beta and now there is one more coefficient 
कॉल्ड कोइफिशिएंट ऑफ डिटरमिनेशन व्हाट इज कोइफिशिएंट ऑफ डिटरमिनेशन इफ द कोरिलेशन बिटवीन स्टॉक एंड द मार्केट इज से 0.9 एम स्टॉक इज ए मार्केट इज एम एंड कोरिलेशन सी ओ आर आर एक्चुअली दे यूज इट बाय आर दिस इज द टर्मिनोलॉजी i say am this is correlation between a and m do you know how to calculate yes sigma a minus a bar m minus m bar divided by n or p perfect very good now if i take the square of this i get 0.81 this is known as the square of the correlation is called a coefficient determination it shows what proportion of the systematic risk to the total risk okay i will tell you so systematic risk divided by total risk what is the formula for systematic risk systematic risk beta square into market variance what is total risk standard deviation of a square this is total risk so if i convert this beta into this equation standard deviation of a divided by standard deviation of market into correlation it's a square because it is beta square no beta i change this equation so in this equation what i will do now i will start striking off see this beta only i will change and i'll write standard deviation of a standard deviation of m into correlation of am to the whole square into n square divided by portfolios a follow now this entire can i strike it off with this because it's square no square can i strike this is divided by that's the can i strike it off this with this so what remains square so what is the when i square the correlation what i get i get systematic risk divided by total risk that means if my total risk is say 50 100 out of that how much is contributed suppose my total risk is 30 marks i was expecting 70 you should give me 30 in that how much institute is responsible that is represented by correlation square followed no yes with this we are done with the theoretical part we'll just go and solve some of the q and a's two yes we are done with the beta calculations capm re compare with actual return we have done we calculated p0 using ke ke is nothing but same re then we compared with the price total risk systematic risk unsystematic risk we followed see when we are talking about beta it was linear regression linear regression means only one factor we have considered like suppose your marks it depend on what studies it is like cap you consider only one factor and you try to establish the relationship how many more hours i study how many more positive correlation or negative correlation positive beta or negative beta beta i should not say because when you say preparation you should talk in terms of total risk correlation is it a positive correlation or negative negative the more you study less marks you get correlation see if i look into your preparation and the marks which is dependent which is independent studies so i will plot it in x axis studies and y axis marks do i have got a positive correlation or a negative correlation perfect positive no not a perfect any other than perfect positive <laughs> perfect negative it would have been good no if it would it had a perfect negative correlation ha huh? nice don't means the more you study no less marks you get <laughs> don't you, you don't study only full 100 out of 100 only where i plan no in imagination it is going to happen the <laughs> nature is not going to permit why because if at all nature would have permitted that no the the life would have been boring do you enjoy this life if that suspense was not there if that thrill was not there that means you don't prepare also you get marks then what is the fun there one comes in life it's only when you put efforts and get what you want which doesn't comes to you so easily because something which comes to so easily we no value like what our parents 
That's the only thing what we have got free of cost, no? Wealth. For granted, it's there. Water. Free, no? No value. So, when we try, then it makes sense. Okay, anyhow. So, arbitrage pricing theory says, look, Baba, you are, why you are considering? Is it one factor? Your marks depend on only one factor? No, then... Uh, so many things are the mindset of the evaluator is there. Then what we'll do, we'll try to gather all the information and try to establish relationship also, no? Timing and the mindset. So, okay? Then is it only to No, economy. Number of uh, students appearing, so many factors. So that is called arbitrage pricing theory. Okay, so now let me explain you the theoretical part of this arbitrage pricing theory. So, arbitrage pricing theory is an alternative to CAPM. Arbitrage pricing theory agrees that to the extent unsystematic risk gets cancelled because of the diversification. But you can't simply say no. So, your matter, uh, your return depends only on the systematic risk. How can you make such assumption? That's why arbitrage pricing theory criticizes CAPM on the ground that true market portfolio does not exist and proxies like Sensex, they may not capture all the systematic risk. So you have to consider certain macroeconomic factors like growth rate, GDP, inflation, interest rate. So your expected return RE is RF plus beta into MRP divided by 1 is there, eh? which is that one beta of market. But in APT, what is your expectation? RF to by minimum you have to get plus. How many times say MRP plus? How many times say inflation plus? How many times say GDP growth? So which makes sense, students? Which 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 model is better? The second one is better because you are not just taking one factor. But it is it is a lot of data involved is there. Data analysis is required. It may certain information you may not gather properly. But the other alternative argument that okay, don't just consider one, but this you consider many. That is called arbitrage pricing theory. If no surprise happens, then macroeconomic factors are equal to the actual return, shall be equal to the expected. Actually will be expected. So what is the unanticipated changes happen in the factors? You are thinking that everything will be normal. Suddenly, Israel and Hamas fight starts. It's going to impact in eventually. And you never thought, say, Iran got involved in the war. You always think that Iran may not get involved. Suddenly, you see that Iran is also in inside the war. Chalo, dollar prices are 200. Not dollar prices, sorry. Um, uh, oil, barrel, uh, crude oil prices are 200 dollars. Gone, no? Share market is going to shake. That is why. If the anticipated changes happen in the factor, the formula to calculate uh, arbitrage pricing expected theory will be RF plus beta 1 into expected value minus actual value. Beta 2 into expected value minus actual value. Okay, This is the surprise factor. There is only one question on this particular equation. Study that. RF and beta is the sensitivity factor. Okay, All the aspects except sharp optimization framework. There is only one question out there. I told you, no? you have to understand the concept. This question never came. I don't know in the old syllabus whether the exam it came or not. But definitely in the new syllabus, all 12 attempts it didn't come. In new syllabus also, I am not sure whether it is going to come or not. It is only one question. See, now what is this sharp optimization framework? It is the framework to select the portfolio. In Markowitz portfolio theory, how did we select the portfolio? We discussed efficient portfolio, optimum portfolio. Efficient portfolio, two stock having the same return, lower risk you keep, higher risk you discard. That way we selected the optimum portfolio. So, Sharp also suggested one framework for optimum portfolio. How? It is using single index model, beta. That means it must be based on the beta factor. This framework was designed, developed to find out the desirability of the inclusion of security in the portfolio. Like which security I should include in my portfolio? Markowitz went with a different approach. He said mean variance dominance. Who? Markowitz. Sharp cannot say mean variance. He has to say in terms of beta. 
the construction of the optimum portfolio once you select the portfolio it's called efficient portfolio there because single value should explain the desirability and then you should go further way the desirability of any security is solely defines the function of excess return to the beta ratio that means how much excess return is going to give you over beta which is nothing but a trainer ratio based on some cut off point there should be one cut off no in the markovitz we call it b portfolio b optimum that's the cut off below inefficient you remember no this one efficient frontier was there b was the starting point we said below b you forget above b goes with the risk somebody wants to take a more risk you get but b is the optimum one then you decide the ways so to understand this question we can com compare this to the something like we want to form one best cricket team it is a portfolio or i am running coaching class i want the best students now what do, then you will ask me sir what do you mean by best you have to define me now i say i set my expectation very high are that depend my best depends upon who i have applied to me you know in my cricket team i want to have all the best players in the world are but in india are they available so it should be cricket team is selected among who have applied to you so you will choose the students among who have applied to you like this how best the portfolio will be selected among the available stock i need to choose the best one so what should be my criteria when i choose the say cricket players what is my criteria will i choose the all the players with the who who are the best bowlers or best batsmen but which portion weighs more batsmen so you will have one more two maybe the best bowlers but rest 7 to 8 you will have the batsmen only in any cricket team followed no is it possible that you have got eight bowlers two batsmen best bowlers but two only two no that's why my set criteria is runs per over so what i will do i will find out so like all the players will come i will say okay play i'll give one over whoever gives me highest run within that one over can i consider they are the best players because i don't know who are there no on what basis i will select so when say 50 students apply to my classes i will give one test to everyone and say okay in this 100 mark test whoever is going to highest score they are there in my coaching issue something makes sense similarity similarly what i will tell for the stocks now the stocks which is going to give me highest re return you see some uh, batsmen may score 50 runs another may score 30 runs comparison becomes difficult so runs per over gives me better idea like this infosys may give me 12% another person may give me 18% i will say how much per unit of risk that gives me a better idea to compare no so my always first step is to calculate in this is actual excess return to beta ratio that means how much actual return you got over risk free in comparison to the beta like run rate to compare now i have collected the run rates now who is my best player institute says okay we want only best chartered accountants so what they do so many people will apply sir i am also a chartered accountant then they say do one thing we will give you 100 mark paper you perform now institute when they said did they set any criteria what is the criteria 50 marks is the criteria now for me there is a difficulty here i cannot set such criteria because sometime it may so happen that who all the students who applied for the examination their iq is above 200 only 50 become chiller 100% result i will get or that year students who applied whose iq is say particular level 120 that year it becomes very difficult so what i will decide no my criteria is such that it depends upon certain factors based on what who applied that year nice no dynamic depending upon who applies i set one criteria among themselves only depending upon their level 
So for this first thing, I will ask everyone to play. So let us again stick back to the, our cricket team example only, so that we get a comparison. So everybody while playing, they will score say run. I have got some minimum run to score. Below that minimum run, if anybody scores, no out. First of all, I will not consider them only. They are inefficient for me. If I say at least two runs, you have to score in a over. Then I will say how many overs I have given. Say 10 overs, whatever. I will score per over how much runs you are able to score. In stock market language, I say per one unit of beta, how much risk you have taken so that it comparison becomes easy for me. Then I have to rank it. Which one? Highest to lowest. Because when I am saying this ratio, excess ratio, highest number is very happy. The person who scored the highest run will be the first rank holder. Will that person will be there in my team? Definitely. Then I will go to the second one. Will that be there? Yes, third one, fourth one, fifth one, sixth one. Then you say, sir, what is the cutoff? Otherwise, it will go on. No. But my problem, again, I told you, I don't know my cutoff. That is my biggest problem. I have to choose one cutoff among that day's performance. Now, one question comes. If short sale is not allowed, in the question they may ask you, short sale is allowed or not allowed, we will include only best investment in our portfolio. We have to choose and then find the optimum weight. If short sale is allowed, okay, which generally they say in the examination question or whatever study material question, short sale not allowed. That's why we have to choose only the best investment. If the short sale is permitted, we will include all the securities. No question of weight there. Why? Because inefficient securities, we can short sell that. This is only for your academic understanding. Next, we have ranked them highest to lowest and we calculate the value on cutoff with one big equation like this, which Sharp gave, William Sharp. What is the value? C is, cutoff is market variance into sum of actual return minus risk free return by the unsystematic risk square multiplied with the beta divided by 1 plus market variance into sum of beta square divided by unsystematic risk. Now, I had to go to USA, maybe to understand this equation from, I had to get one training. So, what I did now, why only one question, why so much R&D and go to USA and all. So, I applied my imagination, okay, so that you can try to understand what, the, what this output is going to come. See, it is my explanation, I hope. William Sharp is not going to see my videos, otherwise he will fire me. See, this is the equation they have given, correct? So, I will multiply this, uh, what is it called, uh, a sum of actual return into beta, into whatever this dividing factor was there. Divide, no? I will take it up. It will get transposed and say E square divided by beta square. Make sense? I should get the same answer. 1 by, that's it. So now I will cut this because since there is a multiplication sign here. Don't ask me mathematically. I am just telling you so that something sounds simple. Beta, beta gets cancelled. Unsystematic, unsystematic risk gets cancelled. So what I remains is this. Okay, what gets cancelled? Because there is two beta here. Beta square is there. Unsystematic risk fully gets cancelled with this because these both are square values, correct? Beta 1 will get cancelled with this squared value. So what you are left with? You are left with this equation. Now, what is this AR minus RF divided by beta? Written per unit of market risk into market variance divided by 1 plus market variance. For the time being, I will ignore this. Okay. So, what this output is going to give you, cancel this also, no? what it is, return per unit of market risk, 1 plus you ignore for timing mathematically, I will say cancel both. So, C is nothing but theoretical return per unit of market risk, what should be, actually you scored so many run over per, per, per over, 
what you should have scored that is my c so this equation is going to give you one cutoff point then i am going to select only those players who have scored that theoretical runs cutoff value and then i am going to calculate the optimum weight how the weight of 1 is equal to weight of 1 plus weight of 1 plus 2 both proportion now so weight of 1 will be beta into unsystematic risk into x actual return minus rf by beta 1 minus cutoff point so there is one more equation to calculate this so weight of 1 is beta 1 okay so total excess return by unsystematic risk okay again this interpretation will not go into it so there is one more equation to calculate my weights so i have to tell my weight is so and so and this is so and so we solve the problem then you get a better understanding primarily we have to use one two equations here and what he is trying to tell look markowitz told me eliminate all inefficient one on what basis mean variance dominance then you choose the optimum one as per your wish but what sharp said look you have got 10 securities now out of 10 securities which one you should include consider whoever gave you how much excess return over beta take one cutoff among them above all the cutoff no take everyone and then you decide your weight so we will move on to the last aspect of portfolio management chapter which is portfolio evaluation now what we are going to discuss here is portfolio evaluation methods how many uh, techniques are available and what is portfolio revision and rebalancing because by now we have understood like how to first of all how to value a security okay if i want to buy it then what is the return what i can expect from them okay what is the correlation what is the beta when i am considering in the market how to change my beta what i am if i change anticipate the uh, there are other factors also then how to consider that factors okay so overall we have understood about the basics of portfolio management this is the starting point for you then once i have which portfolio is performing better how do i evaluate so i have got a portfolio evaluation methods we have got sharp ratio which we have already done in one of the problem trainer ratio jensen alpha then there is something called a coefficient variation also that we will see later in more uh, and these problems no, we will solve in portfolio uh, sorry mutual funds because there are certain questions in the mutual there is one question in the portfolio management so what i have done from this uh, chapter i shifted this question to the mutual fund because all the these ratios how to use these ratios and to find out the missing figures and all no, we will work out there now what is the sharp ratio sharp ratio is a risk premium per unit of the total risk so sharp considered actual return of the portfolio minus risk free return divided by the standard deviation now trainer ratio is also a measure of uh, the portfolio performance he says that look it is what is what, how you should measure is considering beta it's the same the numerator is same actual poor, uh, results or actual expectation minus the rf actual returns minus rf but the dividing factor is beta so where do we use yesterday we have used you know that for sharp optimization excess return so what there you know in the sharp optimization framework he used this one and then the other equations and then finding out the weights and all so this see and some places we have used some places like we were asking is the portfolio performing better then we what we did actual results we compared with the re that re is nothing but cepm and this is alpha so sometime we may have to evaluate that's why all the problems related to this we will solve in the mutual funds together now where this sharp ratios and trainer ratio will be used like if you are doing sector specific evaluation then sharp ratio is better due to unsystematic risk because this does not include trainer ratio doesn't include the element of unsystematic risk it considers beta but what about the sector specific certain sectors are there it has got its own risk that risk may not reflect to the other things 
look okay like defense sector is there defense sector like whatever arms and ammunition it has got its own risk there different so in such case sharp ratio will be better like if you have, if you have got a diversified fund then that means there is no unsystematic risk so somebody should go for a trainer ratio it is widely found that both the ratios usually give some similar ranking it yeah you, one person will give positive ranking another person negative ranking no gen generally do not happen as most of the portfolios are fully diversified and if it is not diversified you have to use a sharp ratio if it is diversified you can use a trainer ratio like in 1920 where fidelity megalen has earned this is an example given in the study material very nice interesting thing they earned 18 percent while other bond funds earned 13 percent who is better fidelity ah, because why because from the traditional things we are going with the same thing we always look for returns first but do we consider the how much is the risk taken because we already discussed when we talk about a return return should be in relation to the risk somebody may be giving me 100 percent return there may be 100 percent risk also then why banks are existing everybody should invest in company no companies will definitely give more than 100 percent or more than what banks will offer but there is an element of risk so in the absolute number yes 18 percent Megalan become the leader everybody celebrated but if we state that the bond funds had half the market risk so at a market risk you give at half of the market risk you give 13 percent 13 is far better no so we don't need a formula for doing analysis now which is better we by quickly we say this is better but that is missing almost in all the reviews of the brokers because everybody is focusing on the who gave me the results for clarification we do not suggest that put all the money in one they need to be aware about their implications so one nice example they have given the study matter i thought to share with you now the last is the jensen alpha it is the difference between the actual return minus capm return and you can be used to assess the performance of the fund managers if somebody has got a positive alpha they are doing well negative alpha means not doing well now comes okay this is the equation for your alpha now comes the portfolio revision and rebalancing the last step like from time to time we have to evaluate how it is performing is it better it is, should i shift now they are rebalanced regularly as prices keep changing it means the value of the portfolio as well as its composition this is going to change so i may have to change so there are three policies or three strategies for portfolio rebalancing even you can try one warren buffett method buy and hold strategy whatever happens on the earth don't just bother do study that well and just stick to it do nothing policy but you need to be track that huh? do nothing means don't forget it so investors set a limit called a floor here and does not wish the value should go below this and invest an amount equal to the floor in the fluctuating bonds okay there is some formula we'll see that means i keep certain level below this if it comes then i will shift otherwise i'll just hold that constant mix strategy this is something do something policy what is the constant mix under this investor maintain an exposure to stock at a percentage of the total portfolio. i say that look if you invest in mutual funds and all some uh, NPS and all, they ask you how much portion, suppose if you are contributing 10,000 rupees per year, say 50,000 rupees a year, they ask you how much of this you want to be invested in the share market. I say invest 60% in the share market. That's it. Whatever value is there, 60% of the value will be always invested in the stock market. Now one question comes, what if the share market falls? Then it involves rebalancing so that you always maintain 60%, say every month. You just evaluate and rebalance. Say, for example, 60% equity, 40% in bond. And if any change happen more than 10%, no, then you are going to rebalance. If it doesn't happen, you are not going to rebalance. Then, if the price goes down by 10%, you sell the bond, invest that money in the share market. If the share market goes up more than 10%, you sell the shares, take that money and put it in the bond. It's more like a conservative. You, you because people when the share market goes up no people will flock to buy the shares no here there is a full control over the emotion and when this is like ulta and when the share market goes no everybody is running out of the share market but somebody is ulta here 
they are always in the middle balanced that's why it's a constant mix it is a balanced approach say starting level you started with 50000 shares 50000 rupees worth of bonds total value is 1 lakh so if the share market falls by 40 what you do so bond will never fall so it has no correlation there then you have got 90 right 90 divided by 2 say 50 50 sorry it is not 60 40 it is i think in the example any of it is an example 50 50 you want to maintain 50 50 so again you rebalance it start with a fresh thing you buy stock or buy the bond it goes like that now constant proportion portfolio insurance another technique under this technique you set a limit below which you do not wish the asset to call okay i think yeah, sorry here i missed it huh? this is not this okay this is do nothing policy this this portion you can remove it actually this portion is related to this constant mix insurance policy cppi yeah i think when copying or something it must have gone here so under this no cppi maybe if it is there in the study material also don't you please ignore it setting the floor equal to the floor okay this is that cppi where you fix one floor value and some amount you are going to invest in treasury bond like suppose for example understand the logic behind it there's something called a following equation is used called e is equal to m into a minus f what is the logic behind it suppose see investor will give you 10 lakh rupees and he says look whatever happens on the earth I don't want, I am ready to take risk only up to 2 lakh rupees. 8 lakh rupees I want at the end of the year. What you will do as a portfolio manager, tell me. What you will do? Investor, you are the practicing CA. One investor comes. Since you are also invested in the portfolio and all. Somebody, he asks you, sir, I am ready to invest 10 lakh rupees. You invest wherever you want. You can take risk. But I don't want my value of the portfolio to come below 8. 8 is my floor. This is the minimum value I want. So what how how you are telling like how you are going to invest? Now, how many options are available for you to invest? Bonds are there, then shares are there. Treasury bills, you call it bond, debenture, is all bond category. Then you have got equity. Is there any other category to invest? Derivative is there, but it is not an investment, it is a hedging tool, it is a speculation tool. So, you don't better go, don't suggest the client. Now, how much you are going to invest in stock and how much you are going to invest in bond? No, I want 8 lakh rupees. See, my total rupees, client gave you 10 lakh rupees. He said, sir, whatever you want to do on the earth, do, take one to take the risk, do, you invest in the bond, everything, do, invest everything in shares, do. But see to it that my value of investment, my principal is not less than 8. Uh, then you say, sir, I will invest 8 lakh rupees in bond, 2 lakh rupees I will in shares. Correct? Why? Because investor doesn't, you want to keep his 8 lakh rupees safe. No, 2 lakh he told you take risk. But tell me one thing, students. If the market falls, okay, will your entire 2 lakh will erode in one day? It goes in a staggered manner. So by that time you can exit, no. So if you do this, then you cannot get higher returns. Because your the amount what you have invested in the equity share market is a very small amount. And bonds, what it is going to offer you? Risk free. Now what managers will do? No, they take risk. They say that, okay, how much is the see they total amount invested 10 lakhs. How much you say? 8 lakhs, no. 2 lakhs is something available for me. I will take 3 times 2 lakh and invest in the share market. I will take one multiplier based on my experience, my understanding. So, the disposable, whatever you told me, take risk. That money into 3 times, I am going to invest. That means 6 lakh rupees I will invest in the share market, 4 I will invest in the bond market. Chalo, to my bad luck, next day only share market started to fall. What I will do? Withdraw. And get that money back. That, because you have got a cushion of 2 lakhs. No. You wait for the share market to come down up to 2 lakh rupees. The moment you realize the share market will go for a toss. That's why, no. When the share market falls, it falls. Why? Because so many people start selling it. So many people have set the levels. 
the, they have thought certain thing in mind. If it comes, because they are not emotional, they are professionals. Emotional people will sit and hold there. Now they thought, okay, if it comes below this, I am sell. So that comes, that person sell. Since that person comes, sells, market still goes down. Another level comes, another person sells. Again, market goes down. Like this, it has got a domino type of effect. Followed, no? So this is called, and then if the market increases, then the you are making a multiplier. So you, you start investing more money. So this is the another type of uh, approach. Now floor is the one client uh, you are going to invest in the market. So I told you, no? 8 lakh rupees is the floor. It cannot come. And multiplier is something, if you take A minus F, it becomes a, you are too conservative. You are not a risk taker. But if you want to take the risk, if you multiply say 2 or 3, then you have got more money to be invested in the share market and you can offer big returns. Since he told 2 lakh rupees, you can take a risk. I will take big risk. No? That entire 2 lakh itself is I keep like a margin. Understood this logic? So thus we have got 3 portfolio evaluation techniques. Yes, so now we will move on to the Q and A's. Yes, portfolio rebalancing we discussed, buy and hold, constant mix, CPPI. So they may ask you any question. Here no question, okay. This is part of one of the question. Do nothing, what question they will ask? Nothing. And then I will also do nothing if they ask me a question. Okay, floor multiplier we discussed. CPPI, 